Black Oni. You're now listening to the Black Oni Podcast. No, you guys are good. It's just fucking OBS is being weird, being really weird. I've never seen anything quite like this before in my life. But everyone, welcome to the stream. <clears throat> everyone, thank you for being here. We're going to be doing something a tad bit different than the usual. We are going to have my man, Dream Manifested facilitate this podcast because we're going to do some once again different than usual so i'm gonna hand it off to my mans and he's gonna take it from there all right guys what's up we're here with the episode 76 of the black only podcast how's everybody doing today there doing we go fantastic Hi. <laughs> I just what's up guys perfect perfect Hi. so we see who we have today when we have my boy will wiggins Hey! Last one we introduced. Damn it! You fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> the You're a terrible you. host. Hey, My shut pineapple up. friend can do my job. Oh yeah, that's what we're doing. The, the pineapple. pineapple's not even your friend. Yeah, you. Yes, he is. He's talking. I have two pineapples. Have Any one with the pineapple. We have the lovely Ashley Do. Hi. And of course, it's Yoru. Yo, what up, guys? Thank you for tuning in. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, so I wanted to do something different today because Will has definitely given us all a platform to better ourselves. And because he's doing that, he's gaining a lot of ground and there's a lot of growth that he's got going on. So I want to take the time to show appreciation to him and interview him and pick his brain a little bit. Beautiful. So Will Wiggins, are you ready? No. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely yeah. not. That better be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think one of the things that most of your viewers and constituents, if they if they don't know, they might be curious. What is your current career or profession? Yes, uh, what I do for full time work is I am senior design coordinator for a nonprofit org here in Boston. Um, I'm responsible for ensuring all of their outward facing material looks as pretty as it can, uh, so okay. that people pay attention to some of the important things that we're doing. Nice, nice. Now, when was it in your life that you decided that you wanted a career in a creative realm in the art realm? I was 11, 10 Damn. maybe at the time when I like kind of consciously made a decision that I wanted to really <clears throat> pursue something creative. Um, I had always liked drawing. I've always liked making pictures or, or not making pictures making uh, images based off of pictures so like i would find an image of bugs bunny for example and i would draw it to the best of my ability and i would do that for just all different types of things and i liked being able to kind of make it look like it came from the show right 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 um and at the time i wasn't that great but like i was i was continuously learning stuff and it was a really cool experience but i think the defining moment when I decided I wanted to go down this path was when I played Metal Gear Solid for the first Ooh. time. I played Metal Gear Solid with my brother. Uh, shout out to uh, my brother. He goes by Atomic Bombs. Um, and he's a, we've had him on a podcast like ages ago. He's a rapper. Uh, he dropping them Atomic Bombs, huh? Yeah. <laughs> bars. <laughs> bars. Atomic Bars. <laughs> um, and we played that game together like all the time and like even as a young kid like i understood that it was doing something that was just mind-blowing for the time it was taking this gaming medium and turning it into something so much more than just a game it was a cinematic experience and a game and it like taught you shit like real shit like obviously you know psycho mantis isn't gonna like teleport and like show up reading your memory card but there were like all these aspects about like cloning and um and uh like gene therapy and like gene manipulation uh like war deterrence and like nuclear nuclear ca catastrophic events and stuff like that and like i was like 10 or 11 like learning about this shit like what 
So right. <laughs> it was around that time when I, I like consciously made a decision that I want to do shit like that. Nice, nice, nice. And so you mentioned a little bit that you used to start off with books, but did you have anything when you were a kid that you kind of leaned toward most? I know when I was little and I was drawing, I, it was always Dragon Ball Z because that's what yep. was the biggest thing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it was Goku or Vegeta. What about for you? Absolutely. No, Dragon Ball Z was a huge inspiration and a huge component to what I did. Um, <clears throat> leading up to what I do now, like I literally, all of my character, like I used to create my own characters based on Dragon Ball Z. Like, you know, the Anikata comic book might not be what it was, what it is now, um, mm -hmm. if not for Dragon Ball Z. Like my characters all had spiky hair, like they had their transformations, <laughs> like they all flew around and, you know, it was legit, just an extension of Dragon Ball uh, universe. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. So that's definitely dope. I like to hear that, and I like to hear that you've stuck with it. As far as getting to the point where you where you actually have a career in art and in drawing, what were some of the obstacles that you kind of overcame on that particular journey? There were many. Um, <laughs> there were fucking many. Yeah, it was no, cold outside. It was cold outside in <laughs> November. <laughs> Back in oh <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'll talk about maybe a couple of examples. Um, there were internal struggles that I had uh, for a long time leading up to my path. Um, there were kids in, in middle school and uh, whatever school I was in who were better than me. Like I could look at their work and objectively say, their shit is better than mine and they don't even draw as much as I do. That was something that I had to learn to accept, but also it kind of drove me to work harder. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that way in a lot of different ways. Like I remember in college, um, uh, art history class was really tough for me because I don't know what it is, something about, um, something about like dates uh, memorizing dates and memorizing specifics about the like when artists did something I couldn't get down I had to really hammer down and study and I had a friend who could like hear it once and instantly get it and he'll have it memorized for the rest of the semester and like I just am not that kind of person so like I remember that feeling coming back around that time like I have to work so much harder to do something that someone else only has to hear once mm -hmm. um, and I think my artistic journey is kind of a representation of that too. Um, I feel, I, I'm not gonna say that it's true that I worked harder than anybody else, but it felt like I worked harder than most other people did to get only as far as I got. Um, and that was an internal struggle that I had to learn to deal with because there's always gonna be someone out there who's better than you at something. Um, and it's on you to try to make yourself the best version of yourself that you can. Um, so that was definitely one of my struggles. Um, another struggle was uh, hearing from one of my peers that I should give up on art. Damn. Um, I had a girl that I dated who was also an artist. And I don't think she meant it in the way that she meant it, but it kind of felt it, it hurt. Um, right. And she said, you should you shouldn't try to be an artist. You should be a teacher. And she didn't say art teacher. She just said, just be a teacher because my voice was like authoritative. And <laughs> not even because of your like mannerisms or know, maybe, right? maybe just because you have the vision. Maybe, okay. you know, like we got a couple of people that might can attest to his voice being authoritative. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if that was just all it took to be a teacher? Please, please read this paragraph and we'll decide no. if you are worthy or not. <laughs> We're going to go off of the the authority in your voice. How much respect do you command? Yes, yes. Exactly. And then Can we get a walk in. across the room, please? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You start Monday and um, good luck. Uh, yeah. Starting in ninth grade. It's like, <laughs> we have science available. <laughs> like, yeah. My weakest subject. Oh, well, <laughs> great. Yeah, this works. <laughs> this works. Interesting. So she so, told you that you might be more suitable in a teaching role. Yeah, and the idea of being a teacher isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think I think 
you know, I'm working in education reform right now as a as a senior design coordinator for that. So I think I have a lot of respect for educators, and I think it's a job that has a lot of perks. But it's fucking hard, especially in the inner city. Like, notice that? Like, the stress that I've seen. Like, my man, JC Mac 120, for example, shout out to him. Uh, he's a teacher, and he tells me stories about the kind of shit that he sees happens to his students all the time. Like, he was teaching middle schoolers, and, like, one of them got shot. Oh, my God. Like, goodness. one of them got shot. Like, you're fucking 11, dude. So... And it's rough because you, you come home and you're just like, man, like, am I doing enough for these kids? Like, it has a bearing on you, especially if you have a heart. So, like, I have a lot of respect for educators. But at the same time, um, hearing that I should give up on my path. Like, and then this is another example of, of one of those things where, like, I recognize I used to work at this place called Artists for Humanity, um, where it was basically like a it was a mentorship program, but it was also a job. So you, you go there, uh, you learn some fundamentals of of making art um and and you essentially try to make a name for yourself um and i did a bunch of different projects i did stuff that was donated for uh huge auctions i've done stuff for um i've I've done stuff that people have bought through there and i've done like other collaborative pieces for the organization but um there was always this piece of me in the back of my mind i was just like man like there's so many of these people who are way better than i am here um, and they're all my same age and just they're just like levels above what I am right now. So I've always in one way or another dealt with that. But okay. um, <laughs> that was one well, I think I think that you definitely handle it the way that you're supposed to. And especially um, it's something for others to apply in their own life, even though it's hard. Um, is to never, even though you're com- always competing for the job, right? You're competing for the position, but ultimately you're competing with yourself to make sure that you're successful because mm-hmm. you could potentially just be competing with this one person over here and then someone else who y'all weren't even paying attention to comes and blows both of y'all out of the water. Yeah. So as you say, as long as you're making sure that you're the best version of yourself, you know, then you really can't go wrong. And even if you don't get it, you still have that accomplishment, you know, you, you can still take what you learn, how to build yourself up. You can take that and apply it in, in many different areas. Um, now, <clears throat> ultimately, what do you see or what what is the goal from your art? What do you want your art to stand for or speak to? There's a few things. Um, the main goal um, is to... Create a comic book series and have that comic book series turn into a video game. That is my ultimate goal. Um, okay. So I want to take a different route than the usual. When I was scouting around for colleges, uh, New England Institute of Art was on the top of my list, and I was actually going to go there um, to do animation. And I was like ready for it. You know, I, I did a lot of the paperwork. There was only one more piece of paperwork I needed to sign in order to go, and two things happened one um i had a teacher telling me that like she had a a nephew going there who didn't do shit and was still getting by so like he was just like a slacker who was lazy blah 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 yada yada so that kind of deterred me but the main thing at the time was my girlfriend uh she went to college in upstate new york my ex-girlfriend sorry my girlfriend at the time uh, went to college in upstate New York, and so I wanted to be a little closer to her, but I wanted to kind of go outside of my comfort zone, too, because the school that I looked at that was closest to her uh, had a professor who was insanely good, like insanely good. And I was like, well, I could think of worse places to go. So I went there and majored in in painting. Uh, I majored in art, but my concentration was in painting. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I gave up going for animation, and I'm kind of glad I did. Uh it's not that I don't like animation, but it's not what I want to do. Okay. It's not what I want to do. Um, so, but it was one of the things that I felt in my heart was my direct path to being able to make a video game. Um, but I think there are many other ways to do it, and I think the way that I'm doing it is it's going to be more satisfying for me. It may not. It may take longer, <laughs> but hey, yeah. as long as you're able to put out the game that you want to put out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but you never know who you meet in the industry that could help you, you know, push you never, you further and yeah. help you along. Yeah. You never know. One day you're like, all right, I got this 10 year plan. 
to release this, this, and this, mm. and this. And someone comes in with like with massive connections, and they're like, "Hey, I love your base idea. Um, why yeah. don't we just go right into the you know to the animating yeah. phase?" And you're just like, <laughs> "Yeah, you could be like the, yeah, like I, the, the young cat who was working on what is it called, Lost Souls Aside." Lost yeah. Souls Aside. Exactly yeah. what happened to him. Single <laughs> developer. <laughs> Unbelievable! And inspired by uh, Versus Thirteen or Final Fantasy Fifteen, the guy did his own designing, his um, his own his own programming. That's that's ridiculous. He was a single man. He was a one man army. He did everything, and then Sony's like, "There's no one else going to offer him anything." Right. <laughs> All right. We'll he give just, you yeah. a team. We'll, yeah, we'll give you a develop. You know, like a developmental uh, a developmental uh, studio. And uh, yeah, just continue. We're just going to slap our logo on it and um, whatever you need. Let us know. And now. He was doing it part time whenever he had uh, free time in between jobs and school, and now he's like, I, okay, I guess, <laughs> I guess my ten year plan became a, a two year plan, and it's like, mm-hmm. okay. I find in the creative field it's hard to have a ten year plan because opportunities really do come up. It's not the same as. A lot of traditional <clears throat> careers where there is a path where it's like, okay, first you enter at this level, and then mm-hmm. you're this, and then you're this. You know, given, you know. I, I see in those how it can be accelerated because of, you know, some networking or a position becomes available, but usually they're a lot more structured with what we do. It kind of is like just this series of opportunities and you don't know which ones are going to pan out. You don't know which ones are, I mean, like, I don't know when I started, it was just an indie comic group that asked me to dress up in their costumes. And I had, I, I didn't think it would end up, you know, almost three years later, it's not my job. I'm not longer. I'm no longer working with them. Mm-hmm. But you just don't know what opportunities are going to come up. Uh, which ones you try for and it doesn't work out. Which ones do you think? Uh, I guess I'll give this a go. It ends up being the best opportunity possible. Yep. So yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and and I, that's something that's hard for a lot of us to just kind of understand because we're so used to the whole high school, you know, like high school college prep way. It's just like this, start here. This this this. this. <laughs> And then one day you just go like you said, oh, I'm going to just, you know, work for, you know, like a small indie comic uh, group. And then all of a sudden, two years later, you're like, well, I'm, this is now my job. This is now my creative life. And yeah. it's like, well, my, qu- it. <laughs> my question in regards to that <clears throat> is I know that definitely in the creative field is a lot less, more, less structured. But is that really when it comes to when you want to do things on your own, when you're uh, more so an entrepreneur? Because I know like there are certain art things like, there, there is a track. You start as a junior artist or whatever, yeah. then you work your way up. So is it really, is it just a creative, would you say it's creative in general or is it more so entrepreneur-wise? Like, as far as in the cosplay, like that's like art, and like as far as like cosplay, mm-hmm. I, I really don't know anything about that world, so I can, I don't Neither even do know. do I. <laughs> 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 we definitely know. We're just kind of just like, does, did this work? Cool, we're going to right. do it. Yeah. Tomorrow. I think in in some other ones too, because like I know a lot of people who work in comics, and you know you think you're going down one track, and then it were or, you know what I, you just don't know what you're gonna end up working on. Like I, I think more so for like freelance work. I think when okay. you get in, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. More so freelance or when you are you know just doing it yourself versus when you get hired to do say storyboarding or something. Okay. You know, that I think when you're when you're hired by a company and you are working for a company, then yes, right. that's okay. That has I think more structure to it. Uh but when you're doing more freelance, yeah, freelance or just sure. entrepreneur. Yeah, you're right. Gotcha, gotcha. So studio versus freelance. Mm-hmm. There's both which is good though. I mean, like <clears throat> artists don't have to, you know, like like back in the day it was pretty much you starve or you get really, really lucky. Like right. nowadays there's there's a structured path for artists to go to, like uh, like Ash is saying about um, you know, storyboarding, you know, working for a company, and you know, making sure that you know there's there's these steps that you have to take in to become you know, like the best possible you, mm-hmm. or you can go through an entrepreneurial you know love, love, you know path, and it's great too. Or you can do both, and like we're yeah. doing, it. And he's he's certainly doing both. So fuck yeah. it, you know. Sometimes you gotta. You got to go ham and, you know, ham, egg and cheese on both. <laughs> I definitely look up to Will a lot for that. Yeah, like, I don't you know. You talking about burning the candle on both ends. Yeah. Yeah, man. All you got to do now is just remember to sleep and you'll be golden. <laughs> yeah. What time What time does your regular job start? What time are you supposed to start? Do you go in? Or? What is it? Yeah, day in the life. Give us the day in the yeah. life. Because I'm always curious. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people who work full time, too, and we're all different. Yeah, I'm supposed to be at work at nine. Okay. 
Um, and there was a time maybe last year before I had a girlfriend that I was streaming pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I would get up, go to work by nine ish, usually nine twenty, because the traffic around here is terrible. Mm. Uh, I would get to work, do my day job in between my day job. I would be like responding to emails, responding to like social media stuff, like getting in touch with this person, getting in touch with that person, looking up news online, still working, still doing all the other shit I have to do. That's like covering like now, like nine plus sites in the U S mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I would get out of work, go home, get home at about six. I would uh, eat. Usually I would just cook something real quick, maybe like pasta or something. Like I, I can cook pretty Fast. well, but like I often didn't have time to cook. cook like to properly cook, it is like, it oh, yeah. is real time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And like oh, in between yeah. that, I'm like, all right, now I got to figure out what I'm going to stream tonight. Is it going to be creative? Is it going to be, uh, is it going to be gaming? Is it going to be this, that, and a third? And like all or in between that time, you're strategizing about how you can continue making your channel grow or making your online presence grow. And like, there's all these pieces that I was just constantly picking at and, and you know, step by step, just tackling. Um, and then I would go live and stream until about two and do it all again the next day. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I do now is very similar, uh, except now I have to take more days off because I have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I adore our relationship, uh, but there are times when I'm just like, man, if I could just have one extra day to stream, that'd be amazing. I, I know you hard because uh, work life balance is difficult, especially when you're working. You're working two full time jobs, and I I totally understand it because to me, a day off is when I only work six hours. Like I'm like, yeah, yeah. And like, and it's been like that for years. <laughs> yeah. Like for years, I had to remind myself, no, that's not an actual day off. And it's gotten to the point where, yeah, spending time with friends, I feel like, like, I feel this weird anxiety because you got, you get used to just working yeah, and you think that you're doing something wrong mm -hmm. when yeah. you're not doing that. Like, you're like, Shh, like, seriously, something's no, going wrong. No, something's going no. wrong. I have things to do. And you're thinking to yourself mentally, like, you're not actually present because half of your mind is dedicated to your work life where you're going exactly. like, this is my to-do list. Yep. And then you'll be listening to someone's conversation but things will come into your mind like it seeps more mm -hmm. so like it starts taking over your mind it's, and it's like oh yeah louder. i gotta up that thing i forgot to do that yeah. email and then like oh that reminds me how many conversations i've you know tried to make time for being at coffee with my friends and i'm just like that reminds me this thing and they're just like hey 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 we're not talking about work because we're, we're, we're like, concentrating on friendship and having fun and exactly and you're like can't we just do both yeah, <laughs> and they're like, oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And because it's, they want to make sure you're mentally okay, too, because we become workaholics. That's yep. oh, yeah. what it is. We oh, for sure. We become workaholics. We're addicted to the work because we want uh, we want something better. And then we continue. And we progressively get worse as workaholics, too. <laughs> like, one thing will trigger, like, oh, I got to get this material to do this, this, and this. Oh, or I got to set, you know, send 15 mm -hmm. emails. Maybe if I just get my phone right now and start texting and they're like, no, no. I pick up my phone and then I, it's been two and a half hours mm. and I don't even realize. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Like I'll look down and I'll just, and you know, what's funny things that I, I used to be my entertainment or my unwinding, uh, because I've involved them in my work. So it's not just, I'm reading this article or watching this streamer or watching this YouTube video. It's you're kind of doing, uh, research, you're doing research, research. Yeah. yeah. So that is technically work. So oh, it's yeah. on your mind. You're going, oh, that worked for that channel. Like, oh, I really like this, or yep. you know what I mean. Like, you're you're actually subconsciously doing research in the time that should be your downtime. And I find when it comes to your part, you what you need to do. And like, I'm still working on myself, so it's kind of like, you know, you know, when you can give advice but you can't live it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. So what I'm saying is you need to, and I, I mean, we all probably could take this is when it's your time off, it is well-deserved and it is your time and don't feel guilty and don't feel like, yeah, I wish I had another day. It is a meaningful day that will recharge your batteries and refresh your mind in ways that will actually make you more productive yeah. because when you have a sound mind, you can make clear thoughts. You can, you know, 
just taking yourself away from it from a bit, getting that proper breath will kind of give you like more strength to do it. Oh, yeah. So, so like it, it's, it's hard because I feel you. I want to spend time with my friends. I want to spend time with my family without being like, no, it's constant. constant. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's one thing I've learned to be able to apply to life is to, is the breaks. Cause yeah. I, I, I literally applied it to all facets. So definitely within working on these kinds of things, whether it be in an athletic film, like when I had my jujitsu tournament, like the day before I didn't think jujitsu, I didn't do anything. I just, cause I had, you know, I had done my visualizing. I had gone over all the scenarios in my brain. So the day before I didn't want to stress myself out, you know, so you just do everything, you know, to wind down, do whatever it is that brings you back to, you know, like your level you. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, yeah. Goal, baby. exactly. You know what? You know it. So now that that's, you know, you, you had your upward curve for your, your art career, you know, that's that's settled. Now you decided to come into the YouTube and the stream world. And as of late, you've been picking up a lot of steam with that. Yeah. When is it in this world that you realize you were doing it right? Um, there's a couple of things that are the reason why I think I have been growing a lot. Um, I think a part of it is I've been trying to make myself as available as possible to help people. Um, and I'm not, I don't, I don't help people so that I can get ahead. I help people because I find an opportunity to use what I've learned in my time to literally help people. Like anytime any of you guys have a question, like no matter what I'm doing, I will try to make time to like say, Hey, this is someone that I care about. I love them. I'm going to help them out. I'm going to give them my best. And I try to do that for as many people as possible. Many people will see also in the discord that like, Um, I've been very attentive to the discord. So like, I think a huge part of growth is building community and, uh, investing yourself into the holistic view of everything. Um, I think it's really important to be a part of it, not just to, to make content, put it up and then it's like, let it sit there. It's like, you have to, you have to engage with people. Um, it's social media working. It's you're, you're right. I mean, Ash, I don't know if you do this as well. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah. you, your point is great because that's how you grow. Like you're you're doing exactly what what I noticed a lot of people that gain steam and that, that push themselves even further do. Like you'll you make yourself available for a lot of people to help you out. I mean, uh, to help out people, but then they start like, oh my god, this guy's amazing because he actually. Excuse me. Bless you. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then on your social media, people just like look at that and they're like. He did it out of the kindness of his heart and because he wants to help out. Because that's the type of person you are. You've always been that way, too. You've always this is very true. This is very true. I don't, and I don't, you can't even deny yeah. that, like, oh, like you said, like, oh, I'm not in it for, you know, myself. It's like, dude, you, you've always helped people. Like, I mean, like, we've known each other for, like, what, four years, five years now? And and in the in that span, you've always been helped. Well, I think uh, we've known each other Thirteen might have oh 2013 okay i was like was it 2012 2013 Mm. yeah we've known each other for a while now yeah um yeah yeah it's it's important um it's important to to spread love outwards um and i think more and more people are having the opportunity to see that and i think that's wonderful um there's a couple of other reasons i think too though uh one i've been doing giveaways giveaways are like helpful to to get people who didn't know about you involved. Um, And I've been using Gleam to do those. So like there'll be people uh, who come in through Gleam and they'll see the stuff. And it's like, oh shit, I didn't know you, there was this person who did art and gaming and all this cool stuff. Um, Another part is just uh, getting involved in podcasts. Um, Mm -hmm. People have been, no, I've been doing this black only podcast for a long time. And it's been a, it's been an absolute delight doing it because it's a, it's been a tool that we've been able to use to bring us all together and basically giving us a, an excuse to take a break from all of our other stuff and just talk about stuff. And it's, it's been really amazing. Um, and I never would have imagined that it, I, I wouldn't have imagined that this would have been a thing at all. I used to be in college and I would listen to all these other people doing these podcasts. We, we had Jesse Cox on the show, like literally 
E, Total Biscuit, and Dodger were people I used to listen to every day. Mm -hmm. And to now call get him, like, a, and I'm getting a little emotional. He's getting emotional. Like, weird, right? Come on, bro, hang in there. <laughs> to now call someone that, like, I, I was, like, watching their stuff all the time, like, a friend. Like, I literally saw him at E3 by accident at an after party. And, like, we just, like, we kicked it. We talked like we were, like, we had known each other for years. We have, mm -hmm. technically. We, I met him years ago, but um, it, it was just, it's just cool and amazing to think about that as, like, a thing. Um, so... I think that I think establishing relationships with people um, and just talking with folks and um, you know if you if you see somebody on another example Drifter like I I saw him I used to watch his videos every day all the time I saw him at PAX East like three or four years ago and I interviewed him and I remember before that I had asked him a while ago I was like hey I want to get some insight from you about like what I can do to improve the quality of my channel and he looked at he's like yo dude like your shit's great. Um, I would just say, like, if you want to just, like, try to upgrade your audio setup, but every, everything else is looking good. When I interviewed him, I told him who I was and what my, and I showed him my logo. He's like, wait, I've seen this before. So he remembered it. And I saw him at this same after party. I saw uh, Jesse Cox, and he remembered me from that. Like, we hadn't seen or talked to each other in a long time. And uh, I asked him, like, ages ago, like, four years ago, if he wanted to be on a podcast. He's like, dude, I can't. Like if I ask him now, he'll say yes because we've established we've established a relationship. It's not necessarily about trying to get anything from anybody. It was just, mm -hmm. hey, I think you're awesome. I think you're cool. I think you do some awesome shit. Um, let's just let's just have a chat like any other person. Like you, you'll find that a lot of these streamers and YouTubers and people are just super personable. You just have to talk to them like you know people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. It's like with you, you you know, people talk to you like a normal person. You're gonna respond in turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, look at you! Look at you! Look at you, bro! Look how big you've grown already. Well, some people, yeah. I still get this now. Some people will like <clears throat> go on YouTube channel or YouTube videos and be like, "Hey, can you go check out my stuff?" Blah blah blah. It's like you hadn't even responded to anything that the video was about. You just like literally here to just like do a self plug, like. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, respond. I, I never, that. I never fuck with that. I, never, <laughs> I don't. Like I find that yeah, people will put that in call, like not just YouTube, but I, I used to see that on Instagram all the time. Yeah, but I think yeah. that's why they added the feature where people are they they search a hashtag right like cosplayer. Yeah, and then they just post links to all their stuff, and right. like that's I don't know. I just find that kind of like not even like it's a generic comment like hey cool cosplay so I can tell it's a copy paste. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's not even, like, if you wrote something personal about it, you know, like, hey, I also use this type of material. I love exchanging information with people, you know what I mean? Because you don't, I don't know, like, oh, I like the way you use this kind of craft foam. Whatever. Yeah. Check out my stuff, too. That makes sense to me. That means you're actually right. there. Um, but if it's just like, hey, cool cosplay, check out my page, plug. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a plug, and you're just like, whatever. I'm not even gonna. Hey, fuck gonna anybody. But they hey. do that a lot. You notice that? There's yeah. Been like a spike in that, especially like, you'll be like, you'll post up like, you know, like a like a progress picture or just like at the finish, you know, like uh, like a finished photo shoot. Hashtags. Shoot. And it's just like, you're like, uh, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Here. Why are you self plugging on my page and just saying? Sometimes you won't even say, "Hey, cool cosplay." They'll just be like, "Oh, check out my they like, just throw in that shit like a lot of especially like the rappers like the whole especially like because you know like in the rap realm is becoming increasingly popular and feasible to create a career from youtube and on your own you know independently just uploading things to soundcloud and youtube mm -hmm. so now it's like anytime somebody sees somebody catching a wave or getting getting on Traffic, they're like, oh right? exactly they, they want to jump on they yoga, wanna, right? the yeah. high train <laughs> Go yeah. jump on the hype train, get two tickets, you know, to coach on the hype train. It's like it happens and it's true, yeah. It's and and I think if from they were if they were actually interested in me looking at their work, they would privately message me. Mm -hmm. Does that not make sense? But at the same time, you know what I did notice? Especially this happens to me too, like um a lot of amazing cosplayers are very, very, very intimidating, especially some of their armor work and stuff like that. So they yeah. just might be like, 
fuck if I if like I PM them and they just like leave it Maybe on they scene. Won't see it. Like, I, yeah. Shit, what's the worst that can happen if you send a message? That's true. You get, I hear you. Get, you, get, you, get you, chalk, you get chalk on scene, nah, bro. Like, I mean, it's a hit to your confidence. I think that's what it is. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Is just like no, or they, they'll just leave it on scene, or they won't even respond. Like, I mean, at that point, you can be like, all right, dust yourself off and keep moving. But to the yeah. person that doesn't have that much confidence, and it's just like, hopefully, this can. They can check out my stuff and maybe give me pointers. It's, yeah. it's a big thing. You know? I mean, like if they if they respond with something like that, it's a huge, huge boost to your confidence because it means that oh, you know, Ashley just said that you know my 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 armor work is actually really good and to keep going. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> um, and then you know go from there, and then yeah. that little boost is what set them off into a path that they got, you know, better stuff, you know, better material. Somebody notice me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. No, right. Comes down yeah. Like, somebody's finally noticed me. It's reassuring. It's kind of like when your coach says, like, let's say you're not the best player on the team, but your coach says to you, like, hey, that was a great play. Yeah. I, got, I played a lot of sports growing up, so that, that meant, like, you know. It does. It, it feels it, good. It makes a bit. Yeah, it does. But there's a difference between, like, hey, coach, hey, coach, notice me. Hey, coach, hey, yeah. coach, hey, audience, hey. Like, is there and. Go sit down. Yeah. No, oh my god, bench. do you know the, bench. I'm rotating you, you know? It's yeah. like the biggest thing that used to get on my nerve in class are those people that just be asking questions. Yeah, no, it is one thing if you got the answer cool. Because I, I was I was also the kid that always wanted to answer the question, right? Yeah. But yeah. I was I hate the kids that like they ask questions in a way just to like try to show that they know some stuff. <laughs> but it's right. easier to like, bro, can you like fucking calm down? We're in like geometry one. Just we don't we don't have time for like you know, <laughs> geometry one. <laughs> yes, for AP calc and like geometry, please. I'm 13. I shouldn't be having to go through all this shit. Pump the brakes. Oh my God. Pump, pump the brakes. All right. Yeah. And so uh, what well, I want to I want to say one more thing in terms of growth. Yeah, go ahead. Uh there's uh, this thing called auto follow right now um mm. i don't like it i appreciate that i'm getting more uh followers because of it but i don't like it um basically on the twitch app on mobile i'm not sure if it's also the case on uh standard um people have an option to to uh set up an auto follow feature where it'll just follow um, somebody who does The Witcher 3 and also Dark Souls but also Dream Daddy um, mm. and it, so it'll just automatically follow people who are who it's follow doing the search it. for you yeah basically but I don't I don't understand though does it does it also like make you automatically follow them or do you have to actually click on follow for each person I've never heard of this unfortunately yeah I, mean, yeah, I, I haven't no used it but it. I just know from a, from people telling me about it and their experience oh, using Ronan it oh Ronan has an answer it swells it's, your number up, but it's not genuine. So is it is it bots or is it just it's people, like? people, but it's people. So it is who, real, but they a lot of people will un like unfollow rather than follow. So like they'll just press like auto follow whatever channels, and then if they watch right. you and, and see, they'll probably unfollow you if they don't like you. I understand. Um, okay. So it's it's. I don't like that. That's kind of like. Because like you yeah, actually don't know yeah. if you're saying thank you to somebody who's <laughs> actually there. You're just like right. It's, so it's it's weird. I appreciate that we're you know we're getting a boost, but I think they need to fix that. That's not. It's it's like hollow numbers. If that makes yeah. sense, yeah. it's like a hollow what following. Like bots or fake. When people buy followers, I'm just like yeah. yeah. Dude, Instagram's just gonna clear that junk out. Yeah, and then you're, yeah. it used to it get really not. bad on Instagram. It's yeah. probably it's probably worse for you guys because you guys have a really big following on Instagram now, but. I only ever lose like maximum 100 people every time they do a cl like a thing because I don't buy like I don't I don't buy things or click like want more follower or whatever. I've seen oh, them, but yeah, yeah, I, you always see them that they they'll leave a message or they'll leave a comment. Want more followers? Yeah. Come right this way, and you're just like, yeah, I just rather don't care have for it. Always? Like, yeah, especially because like I I do monetize my account in some ways, and I think it's dishonest to the people who are worth who want to invest in me. I think it's not a a fair business practice to be like, oh well, I actually have a million followers, but it's right. not, like it's like it's not real, right? No, right, exactly. But how many of those people know you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if they're not, or if they're just bots, right? Like, right. if yep. people are willing to invest in me, I believe I owe them the integrity to give them a true number. Right. And well, see, that's because y'all are genuine, genuine people. You know, there <laughs> you actually want to build a relationship with your constituents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Brandon, that's the main thing. Yeah, you that, have to. You're gonna you invest. To. I get super emotional. If someone's gonna invest in me, I'm just like, 
You believe exactly. in that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You believe Thank in the half assed work that I do? This is amazing, you know? It's just I like. Was- yeah, even like I work so hard, and like the fact that people, I, I, I realize how hard it is to earn a living, and the fact that people will spend, like to me, uh, money is actually time. Um, I, I don't see this currency. I go, you just you spend five hours of of your work on me by buying that thing, yeah. or you, you know what I mean when they subscribe to my Patreon or like Twitch. I think of it as like, wow, you actually just gave to me an hour of your day of your work day and it, that means a lot to me because that's that is their time and what do we I'll have in life back. Time. yeah exactly that's really 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 that's a beautiful way of putting it because if you look at everything you know monetize it's like money is dollars money or dollars or whatever money. yeah it's just but when thing. you start it's to it as time it's time a whole real. different thing it's like you just worked an hour to give me or to buy this product that i'm selling or, or whatever me an hour of your life uh, it's you know, a value system of your time yeah. yeah, so it means I get really emotional when I think deeply about it, and I'm so thankful and so grateful that you gave an hour of your life to my art, to breathe life into my art. So I like I I think because I view people like that, um, it's it's a bit different than just you know whatever. Yeah, no, you're right. You do. You're you're absolutely right because it also creates a a groundswelling of followers of uh, like an actual fan base because wherever you go your 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 fans will follow you and be like you're you know oh i love your work since way back in the day or whatever and then just like we love to see your you know your progression into a bigger artist into a bigger cosplayer and you're sitting there like oh my god just try not to cry you know it's yeah. like yeah play cool well i remember like when he was bald headed yeah and then you're just like, <laughs> I had hair. This was. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Let me see. And so now that you you have had your ups and downs, you've had your mistakes, and you you've experienced your growth, and you've come up now with a formula. What and in both, whether it be something like Twitch, YouTube, any kind of those kind of entrepreneurial type of things, or even within just a creative career, what advice can you give those looking to um, get into this realm of work? And this could be for streaming or for art? Yeah, just for streaming, art, anything in the creative realm, you know, when you decide that that's an aspiration which you want, what would you say, what would you want to say to somebody to help them make sure that they can keep going and be successful? I'm going to say what I say to most people when I see them starting to slip or fall off of the path. Um, and it happens more often than you would, than some people may think. Um, and it's hard because some people respond to things in a very different way uh and yes actually do <laughs> yes <Yeah>. AM. <laughs> the hotness <laughs> overflows <laughs> oh. um i would say there are there are things you have to keep in mind when it, when you're coming up with your ideas for what you want to a experiment experiment with if you're if you're looking to get into streaming experiment with different games different times um yeah that is a big one different times like, especially because like you, w- when you set up a schedule for streaming it's more or s- more or less a way to hold yourself accountable for being there at that time so that people know hey if i come at the black only channel if i'm there on sunday at 1 30 there's something going on mm-hmm. um and if i'm late for whatever reason which happens often because fucking life um, and OBS. And OBS. OBS. Yes. <laughs> My God. <laughs> I tell people, like, hey, as, we're running behind because of connection. this, that, and the third, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so a part of it is communication. A part of it is experimentation, uh, figuring out what works for you, looking mm-hmm. at metrics and seeing, okay, you know, I streamed this whole month. And out of the month, my most popular days were tuesday and sunday let's just say it's tuesday and sunday and you say okay like real talk do you hit tuesday i do stream like, on tuesday yes no but like monday tuesday are like usually keto for me so i started a theme night on tuesdays right right is that lewd day it is lewd day oh, tuesday Lord. that is that, that is up. that is foolish day tuesday is what you're saying I don't, I don't know that you're ready. Tuesday. I don't know that you're ready and for show Tuesday. Up with all the dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh Tuesday, my god! Yes. Yes. Uh, 
Actually, I don't know. It gets really real in there. <laughs> it gets. Like, it, uh, <laughs> it gets really real. <laughs> I have a Monday, Tuesday. That's why I genuinely sort of cut you off, but I genuinely had to ask you because yeah. I did a thing where I was like streaming every day. I think I need to ha- have variance in time because um, I'm mostly hitting the the European crowd with my 4 p.m. But I like I love the banter. I just need to like I want to stream late at night as well um, to get more like of the West North Coast American. people. Yeah, yeah, and West yeah. Coast. And um, I have a really hard time with Monday, Tuesday, and I don't want to feel like it's um, discouraging. But at the end of the day, if I can allocate my time differently, like what is going to be the best use of my time? Uh, So I I did want to ask you, like, yeah, so Tuesday is is a okay for you? Um, Not just the abyss. Yeah, no, it, Tuesdays, especially since I start, like, specifically since I started Lose Day Tuesday, has been popping. Um, and <laughs> I think a big reason for that is uh, because, A, it's hilarious. Um, B, it not a lot of streamers, like, let their audience kind of let loose and talk the way I let people talk on Lose Day or, like, or, I, or play. Or that you talk on game. Lose Day. I mean, it's not just me. <laughs> it's not just me. Um, I'm just saying, like, hotline day. voices. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like, I, you know. Hi. What am I sick? Oh. That's my hotline voice. I don't know what <laughs> I went for, like, <laughs> all the sex, and all that came out was hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> you could have came in with any hi. other phrase. What did she come in? Hi. Hi. I mean, it works, though. <laughs> That's it. Look at Will blushing. Look at Will blushing over there. I need the fan. <laughs> I need to turn the fan on. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Um, yes, this- Last Tuesday, good lord. I mean, so Dream Manifested came by. We were playing Dream Daddy. Again. And I, uh, it's a fucking amazing game, but like we'll play games that are, that are lewd or even if it's not necessarily a lewd game, we'll, we'll have conversations. Like we'll play PUBG and we'll talk about favorite positions or like we'll have the chat okay. come up with like their, their, their quest, lewd question of the day. So people will come in with their questions. They want to know about, the chat or they want to know about myself or they want to know certain things and so it's just an opportunity for people to just kind of celebrate ludity like not enough ludity <laughs> ludity i made yeah. that a word ludity. yeah totally. dude yeah. open conversation about sexuality yes mm-hmm. and some people are too scared to talk about it or they're they i get feel... that for sure yeah and i, I totally understand it too. space where it's like nah man let's do it <laughs> let's yeah. talk about it so we There's get a medium for... in the chat you know it's a, it's it's a good time i think Cool. I I uh, I feel like I'm I'm doing a good enough job because we had people who came out the woodwork to tell us very personal things, and it I I make it a point to make sure people don't feel attacked at any or they oh, feel for like sure. it's more like you do you as long as you're not hurting anybody else exactly like, unless it's consensual. But like, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly. It's just I mean I were I used to work in um, sex education. Oh, okay. So I was in a, awesome. I, I did script and character development for the children and then young adult area. Yeah. So essentially it's not about shaming. <laughs> um, it's about just providing um, the right information for how to do things uh, healthily, consent, like you know what I mean, focusing on health and consent and facts. So it's like, okay, like you're you're interested in getting in this. Like this is more for the young adults. Like for the children, it was like, hey, so I, I voiced um I did the scripting characters and I voiced it, uh, some of the characters for like, hey, children, like this is this. Uh, <laughs> like when they go in like, well, at, like primary school or like whatever, like when they start sex ed. Yeah. So uh, then I worked on the young adults, which is more aimed at like, you know, and a high school, college, under 30 crowd, which is like, hey, if you're interested in exploring this area, this is how to do it safely. So, no, I'm all about like, I, I don't talk about sexuality often, but like I now at least, but I am all about just you're creating a safe sphere for it for people to have open conversation there's nothing wrong with that yeah, and people shouldn't be like turned off by what they're interested in or what they are interested in exploring it's just a matter of doing it like i said safely yeah yeah um and Mo provides that platform for people to just unload i mean like Im- imagine just monday being uh, the start of the week but you look forward to tuesday and then it's hump week and then people are like oh my week isn't that bad because they have something to look forward to and that's what i I personally think that Will does best because he's just like, yes, time to release all your pent up aggression yeah. from the weekend, yeah. the week start for some people because Monday's pretty hard, yeah. and then just coast the rest of the week. And 
there you go. And that's how you get people to just come in and be like, oh, shit, this is a safe space. Well, I like to be choked from behind with like a, with a belt. <laughs> and you're like, all right, well, fuck. Welcome We've to the definitely had that show. in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. oh, it's great. Oh, isn't it? You, you, accept, <laughs> you accept there, you know, and then you, and then you ask, like, what do you guys like about that? Well, what, what, what turns you on the most, you know, like, and then it goes in that. And yeah. like I said, dude, you're, that's, that's growth. And yeah. The Discord shows it all, dude. Yeah, the Discord. We, we have our own private fucking not safe for work, like yeah, we chat. Do. So we oh, yeah. A, on the Discord, I'll leave a link to the Discord. We have a we have an NSFW, and some I'm not going to say any names. Some folks well, <laughs> uh, took it upon themselves to share their gifts with the world, and again, I I'm, I'm I don't want to jinx myself in saying this, but I've been so amazingly ecstatic at the responses and the way that the community is talking about it. like i put in the rules specifically not to put any images of yourself and oh did you? i did <laughs> but i only did so in, for the sake of like keeping people's privacy like keeping that a thing right. i didn't want to make an expectation that people did it but people started doing it anyway because they felt comfortable in this community and i i was that was an emotional moment for me because it could be a very, uh, it could be a very vulnerable thing to do to put yourself to put any image of yourself at all out there, um, and the fact that we've had so many people do it, including myself, um, I was, I was, I'm honored, I'm honored that we have a, yeah. a strong knit community like this. It's only going to continue getting better. Everybody's very positive on this too. It does create not only just. <laughs> It, it creates an, everlast, uh, an everlasting effect, I think, too, because once you can be intimate about your sexuality with another group of people, or doesn't even, uh, you know, like people that you get, you kind of find the same ludity <laughs> yeah. in a level, but you feel comfortable, you feel like you've created a bond that can create more bonds and, you know, a closer relationship with anyone. And like I said, man, I mean, like <laughs> the one time you posted that picture, it like pop, it popped up on my phone. I'm like, oh, I haven't checked this in a while. I'm like, all right, that's why. And then it just slides. Yeah. Yeah. That's more of than I needed to see. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, god damn it, man. It's like my luck. And I'm just like, all right, well, I'm going to close my phone. <laughs> Try hitting with a hammer. All right. <laughs> and, and actually, so, talking but, about lose day is a good way to segue into the next section. Wait, what was so, the last question, by the way? I don't even remember what we were... <laughs> Oh, the last question we were supposed to be you were supposed to be advising the people how to succeed in yeah. life. Yes. And you start talking about just swing your thing out there. <laughs> <laughs> the other advice I have is to be consistent as much as possible. Be consistent. Um fucking yeah, experiment with the different <laughs> games or different things that you do. Um Listen to community. Listen to your community and watch other people a lot. Watch what they're doing. Watch how they have their setup. Watch what their alerts are. Watch what games they're playing. If you are mostly concerned with growth as a streamer, for example, stick to one game. Stick to one game and become known for it. I am known for a few games, uh, but I do. I'm a creative streamer, so I have a category of what I do on my stream. I'm a sorry. I'm a I'm a creative and variety streamer, um, mm. and so I people know what to expect when they come into the channel because I've I've labeled it that way. I don't like to label it that way, but if you want to see growth, you kind of have to. Um, and when you're gaming, as much as possible, stick to one game and be and find a way into that community. Watch other streamers who play that game as well. Um, comment just chat don't even mention your stream or if you do just be like oh man i remember playing this using this character what do you think about this character don't even mention that you're a streamer um because sometimes people click oh, look. Shoot, sorry. oh don't worry about it <laughs> uh, they click me. and they wonder and they're just like hey i wonder you know why does dream manifest and know so much about tekken like why yeah. does know so many things about these characters and they just look ask well 24 7 that's why <laughs> yeah that'll yeah. be right. you your name in chat and then when yeah. they're <laughs> looking through channels Mm -hmm. And they see, oh, hey, I saw them in so-and-so's. And they seem like a cool person. Like, I kind of like what they were saying. Uh, it's that familiarity, right? Yeah. Like, then they might check out your stream as well. Yeah. And, and also have fun with it. Tanisha said something really important, too. Uh, I don't disagree, but I've noticed that when you pay attention to other streamers, you tend to start comparing yourself. 
do not compare yourself to anyone else when it comes to who you are. Um, the reason for that is because everybody's different and everybody yes. hits that sweet spot. Some people just get lucky. It's literally, are you prepared? Do you have a couple yeah. of mods that can help? Are you uh, knowledgeable in what you're playing? Is it the right time? And are people just going to magically appear on a whim and find out that they really like you? That's literally... I still, I'm still not like a huge streamer at this point. That's the thing. Like at any point, you'll I, never think you are though. I like that with Instagram. I was like, I'm nobody until I hit this. And then I hit that, and I was like, oh, I'm nobody until I hit this. Yeah. Uh, no one's even gonna pay crazy. attention to me until yeah. I hit this. And then it's like you will never like as as somebody who knows a lot of people too with like bigger pages for the most part because you're an ambitious person. You will never actually go done. Yeah. Well, see, that's, and that that's humble, not a humble. bad thing. Yes, that's what I mean. Like, it's okay to be hungry. It's okay yeah. to be like, I want more. I know I can be more. I know I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, you will always, it's funny because I hear you say, like, oh, I'm not a big streamer, but I guarantee even one year from now, like, trending your growth, you'll still just be like, I'm not that big of a streamer. Like, that's I hear that, that from everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's it's so funny. Right, right? Come on, come on. It's funny what it does to our minds, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like to be I, proud of what you do. I, like, I feel extremely like, proud and I feel yeah. really good about what I do. I do but. know that in terms of like numbers wise, there's certain conversations that are a little more difficult to have when it comes to leverage in that way. So when I say I'm not a big streamer, that's what I mean specifically when it yeah. comes to, you know, being able to to sliver my way into after parties. I wasn't on a list to at, you know, at a convention like I need to be a big name to be able to do something like that, you know, so. Yeah. Um, that's why I say that I do feel like I'm important to the streaming culture. I do feel like the community that we've been continuing to build here has been amazing. Um, so I, overall, like I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that, but I do think there's more to grow. In. Yeah. Sweet. A lot of there, but you hit a lot of them on the head too. I mean, you did just, just hammer just be out. yourself too that's one of the most yeah. important things too yeah. it's like if you're like if you just want to be known for teching you just whoop ass in teching or get your ass whooped and make you know make it a joke you know like i mean like you know self-deprecating humor is one of the funniest things i've you know like that's my yeah sentence. talented funny <laughs> or both i find that's what you've got to be yeah to be a streamer yeah. you, you know got all, you got both of them though so yeah, yeah. Oh, thank take, you. And, you know, thank you. Not forgetting your goals, <laughs> I think, is important too. I find myself, I have to remind myself of like what I set out to do every now and again, particularly when it's like you will have challenging days and you kind of have to remind yourself why, why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And why you want to be doing it. And some days it'll be like clear as day, others you have to be like, right. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's that shit right there where you're like, oh, like I, I one thing I do have to I, I have to admit that I love about you, Ash, is that you're constantly having new material up on your Instagram. You don't mm, go like so hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god! Yeah. Like you have your like content that's... creation is like I love I love being a content creator, but like it is so much work, and Twitch has helped me with that because it keeps me honest. As in, yeah, I used to work in theories, so like I get an idea and then I just work like eight hours straight. Uh, which is awesome. But like now I have this like consistency where I'm streaming like X amount of times a week. Like, you know, like if I'm in town, I'm streaming almost every day. So I'm doing three hours of work every day, like mm -hmm. of working on costumes. So I'm getting a lot more done yeah, instead of just awesome. going like, I want to do that. Do it. I'm like, all right, let's chip away. Yeah. And, and like, it's great. And, thank uh, you. It's just, thank it, you. It's great. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean like the, the growth is there and not only that, but just content creation is literally beautiful to see uh, even if you're a content creator it's beautiful to see as well like, oh, I, mean, I get so excited when i see other people making things creative like, potter yeah the yeah. process is amazing like dylan uh shout out to princess giggles tonight her yeah, yes. creative oh my god her creative process is genius like she'll like explain things to me and i'm like all right you're gonna have to dumb this down even dumber because <laughs> <you're like, laughs> spoon feed this to me please bun and then she'll be like okay she'll take a paper and she'll draw like a basic shape out, and then she'll be like, "You see that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, I see that." Matrix, like she. Yes! Okay, here's the thing. It's something that I took a while to learn too with sewing and armor building. I don't have to measure anymore. I just cut. 
It's and then, I actually, then I'm like, boom, a breastplate. Like, you know, boom, a helmet. Like, you put this to here to here. I And the same with patterns. Like, I can just cut and I go, like, this is going to be a bodysuit. Because I know my, like, it's my shape, right? Like, it's not like I'm doing commissions for different people where I do have to measure things. But, like, if I want to do my, my Aquaman, I just cut out. Like, when I did the shape of, like, the shape of it. Um, because, and same with, like, bracers. Like, so I know, good. like, my forearm is this big. You got you know. this. But yeah. So yeah, it's funny. Like you get to a point in crafting, especially because like if your body's not going through a lot of changes, you yeah. just yeah. And it's it's great. It's crazy to see that because like you say, you just look into the matrix, and that's what yeah. I know you that have that big time. I know Dylan has that big time. You one day. It's I, I, I one day maybe, but like no, it does. At the like, moment, I'm like, how do you how do you guys do this? Like you'll take a shape, you'll add on to it, and by the time you're done. It is this, it's like this masterpiece. And I'm just, you just start it off as like, draw the owl, draw the circle, draw the things, and then draw the owl. And I'm like, sitting there, I'm like, oh shit, that owl started off as like a circle. Now I'm like looking at it, I'm like, oh, it's an owl. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing because just, I don't know, I just, as someone that's, hard, that my, cre my creative like ability is like bare minimum, if that's bad. Like, I'm even throwing myself like phrase on that. <laughs> Like, <coughs> guys are amazing. Just content creators are just are something different. You know, they're 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 cut from a very unique uh, you know quilt or cloth, and it's it's lovely. And I just never want people to stop creating and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> no, like, and there's so many platforms now that make it accessible. Especially him, my, my my friend right there, pineapple man over there, Danny. Yep. Shout out. Oh, is that the workout partner? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. Hey, swole man, yeah. what's up? I'm gonna have to fly out there. We gonna hit the gym, bro. Hey oh, man, if we fly up here, up here, we all hitting the gym together. Yeah. yeah. Then we go hit the scene. Yeah. Then we go hit the. Scene. Yeah. Then we go hit the <laughs> scene. He don't care. He don't Look at his care. arms. Look at his arms. They're the size of my fucking head. Get, come in. And you have a large head too, so that's crazy. <laughs> I can land a plane on your fucking forehead. You want to go this oh, way? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's cool. He's, he's literally like taking me from like a stick to like a bump on a stick. So it's there working. You know? <laughs> and he's um he's an amazing cosplayer. Please, uh, uh, well, can I plug him on oh, the? Yeah, yeah, dude. You have a uh, you have the the sword. You can do pretty much anything. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. I'm a mod. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, damn. Wait, Ashley, but, uh, you want to type something real quick? I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> but, uh, you you can make me a mod, and I would be like, that's cool. Amazing. I got you. Oh, I have a sword. I got you. <laughs> you, <are now> <laughs> <sorted>. <laughs> like, you can make me one. It doesn't matter. But I want a sword. <laughs> We're giving you that sword. And, oh my god, where is my sword? Your enemies. I have you so many swords Gladio in here. Though. Though. That's literally Gladio still in the background over there. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. yeah. you put and the link up? It's your Gladi. It's your Gladi. It's your. Did you put the? Did you put the link? Uh, no, I just put it on there. Let me uh, let me find the link. But yeah, this is Prompto's gun he made for a getaway. Oh, like the so detail dope. work is unfucking believable, and he's he's talented beyond belief. He also <laughs> is open for commissions too. So shameless plug. Yes. I got you. Go get yourself a commission <laughs> Prompto gun. I might, have, yeah. I might have to commission him to do Ooh, something for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, dude, uh, Will, we need to do like some gauntlets for my character. Look at that sword. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. Look. Yeah, your sword look a little sharper than mine. No, it ain't sharp. I got a point on it. If okay. I stab somebody, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> That's like my sword over there. Like my like I, when I take it out when people follow, it's not sharp at all. It's like <laughs> not. In fact, it has plenty of dents in it because in twelfth grade we did a play for English class and we did it here at my house. And we were like, well, shit, we need some swords. Well, I got those swords. Let's use those swords. And we actually hit them together. And yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, create, create it. That's a long uh, sword. I want a sword. Hey. We're just gonna pierce here with swords. Wait, hold on. You have know. like a dagger. Like, look how huge Hyperion is. One second. This oh, is yeah, my little I'm one. Whip it out.
and he it's light as hell. Anyone can pick it up. It's look at that. Like even has the skulls on it and everything. Like he's, Could you imagine slapping up some of the hit? So with that shit. I have a bigger one downstairs. Oh. That's what she said. Well, I hope. Well, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> if she said that, I don't know. If she's a she. <laughs> oh my god! What did you pick up? <laughs> We're just sitting there like, damn. Please. You did. Imagine you unsheath your sword, and she goes, "I have a bigger one downstairs." <laughs> like, wait. What do you do? <laughs> you know. I mean, do? If you- oh my gosh! I have stories from Asia. So. I used to work in Thailand and in Laos and Cambodia. And another time, like I've been to like a few times to like Indonesia with friends. Friend of mine was hooking up with a lady boy and he didn't know. Oh, but our friend Marley, who's from Indonesia, knew. And he asked her to leave because oh, he didn't man. know he was making out with a boy. <laughs> and one of those- on him. And if you're I'm not shaming trans. If you're into hooking up with transgender, that's cool. It's just he did not know. Yeah, <laughs> no, he was not thing. aware, and now the thing he just wasn't aware. The thing is, yeah, if you mean, if you know and you and you decided to go forward, that's what's up. Like good on you. Bit. If you no, don't he, know, he was expecting girly bits. <laughs> he was expecting girly bits. He got a sword bigger than his. So yeah, <laughs> surprise, like, surprise, surprise, confetti. No one's laughing. <laughs> Lots of tears. <laughs> you should have seen our faces. Oh, so we're sitting there just like... <laughs> when we all realized. <laughs> right. Oh, oh my god. Great. Dreams forgotten. It's not gay unless you push back. Oh my god. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I never worked for Dreams you. <laughs> so, alright. Oh yeah. Now. Huh? This podcast has gone sort of crazy. That's right. So, so now that we all have our swords, awesome. let us now, we're going to transition a little bit from the interview of Will Black Only Wiggins, which was amazing. I hope you guys learned a lot and will apply this in your daily lives. But now we got to talk about some games. You feel me? Yes, please. So Holy what you playing? Samurai, toast man. All these samurais in here and you can't cut me a break. <laughs> uh, I see what you did there. So yeah, what's your plan? The only one that does. <laughs> so who we start with? So what we plan? We can start with. It's Yoru. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, I've been playing with my mind. These nuts. These, no, not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I like how we started very professional and just the downward <laughs> this <laughs> came <laughs> right away, oh, right on time, just like our most of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Honestly, just I literally had no time. I played. Um, I was checking out Overwatch and playing Doomfist. Um, oh yeah, he's kind of broken in the right hands. Like uh, a lot of Genji assault play have tra- made a very good transition because his um his charge punch, his hitbox is ridiculous. You can hit an arm and it's like a one hit KO for most squishy characters. Dude. And I was like, they need to refix that because the hitbox, normal hitboxes are like not that big. Like I mean, Doofus <laughs> is crazy strong. I have reasons why I love it, and I have also have reasons why I hate it. But yeah, dude is crazy. But it's fun to play. Like it's fun to charge that thing up and be like, <laughs> it's like it's like scry- scry- Yeah, you, know, you oh my god, first no bullet, baby. Yo, yeah. no one else remembers that anime. I fucking love that anime. Dude. Which which anime? Was like my that's scry- scry- it. Oh scry- yeah, I remember that. You remember that too? Yeah, yeah, I remember he had the, he had the army. Yeah. yeah. My God, I I want to do a cosplay just because of that. I'll, I'll bring it back because it's like my childhood. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, lot, I'm I'm gonna see him a lot in the new meta. It's looking like um, Doomfist is gonna be a very very uh, pinpoint character for uh, taking out squishies and healers because if it's a one hit KO with a charge and have a combo right after plus two shells you're you're pretty much gonna be genji on crack and, and genji still has a role to play but not i'm, still, a, I'm still sick of genji bro i'm sick of him reflecting all of my shit i'm sick of him hitting me with like the damn tiger upper court with the sword and shit i'm sick of genji <laughs> you sound yeah. like everybody i always see that online just no but my soldier genji is top notch though all right that's everyone else in here unless you're like the top 
one percent. I don't want to hear that bullshit. So okay. <laughs> I used to not like him that much because he was kind of like vanilla, but I've, he's, he's so useful. He's like so if useful. you if you just tap the trigger, your accuracy goes up so much you can hit like rain shots, crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's great. No, no, yeah. he is definitely a hit scan character that if you master, you can. You don't even if you get picks. Obviously, it's a great thing, but if you use them tactically as well, so, you know, just aggressive fire, you know, just adding more damage to shields. The team. It's, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going way too far into the into, into Overwatch again. But aside from Overwatch, <laughs> oh God, it's pretty to die Overwatch. But um, aside from that, I was playing. I was checking out the multiplayer of Final Fantasy for a little bit. And then, yes, like, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. There's some huge gripes that uh, Jamil and, of course, me and Dylan have as well. But it's the beta, so I'm, right. I'm not as I'm not as miffed. But I mean, if it did happen, I and it was it made its way to the final cut. I would be upset. What we're talking about, which Mister Dream manifested, can you know explain more about? Well, we can actually we can actually wait. We can hold off. We can hold off on that so we can talk about what everybody else is playing, and then we'll come back to that. All right, cool. And then yeah, that's pretty much all. I have no time. I'm working on con stuff with all my friends. And like, that's pretty much it. Con crunch mode. Anyone going to Oticon? We'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. Remember, sir. I'm gonna remind you every time you bring up con videos. Yeah, I need you to I do that. Video. I oh, always forget videos. You too. Now that I now I can tell you and fuss at you videos. Okay. <laughs> and I want to. I was thinking about getting a new camcorder thingy, just to br- or just something or a power shot. I was looking at some of those. They're apparently great for vlogging. I was watching a few camera reviews because I would like something. You can use your phone. I have a. What I know my phone ends have? up so full because mm-hmm. like I have to, I have a lot of high res photos saved on it, which helps for me posting content. Yeah. So I try cycling it out, like delete whatever. It's just like it takes up a lot of space. Really? Um especially when I'm at a con, I usually have a lot on my phone. Cause I don't always bring my laptop, right? Yeah. So I like put a lot on my phone so I can post it on social media for like the five days or something that I'm on the road. Jeez. So yeah. So, well, why are you doing all that? What you playing? What am I playing? Oh my god, I'm so stoked. I spent a month on the road. Um, so I started playing games as soon as I got back from New York the other week. Uh, Justice uh, sent me Horizon Zero Dawn because I've been talking about it all month. I'm like, I know, because I've been like, I know, I was like, I gotta go get it. I gotta go get it. But I was in New York and then Toronto. Wait, New York, Montreal. I had a week off, but I had so much work to catch up on. Uh, and then I was in toronto and new york again so i was like this month this month just and like the month before i was prepping for it so i feel like i've been in a hole and i've been talking about how much i want it Mm -hmm. so i finally got it and i've been sleeping at like four in the morning every day since i started playing and um other than that i my xbox oh so weird the wi-fi it's 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 broken oh wonderful yeah yeah i have to send it in so i wanted to be playing destiny um, because I would play it on PlayStation. It's just like my main. I have a weird thing about loyalty. So <laughs> I refuse, loyalty, baby. yeah, I refuse to play it unless it's with my main. And I was playing Destiny predominantly on Xbox. Um, I played it on PlayStation, but like my girl, oh, she's there. She's waiting for me. So um, <laughs> I have not been able to play Destiny. Other than that, I'm still playing Pokemon, the card game, and. Um, I know it's not a video game, but I've, I've been playing a lot of Magic lately. Nice. So, but that's yeah. mostly about it. Um, because, like I said, I can't play any of my, my Xbox games right now. So, yeah. That's that's my life. Since, well, uh, I feel like uh, with Destiny yeah. 2, you, since the only thing you're going to be able to carry over is just like the way they look, I mean, you can, I guess, choose whichever platform you feel more comfortable with for Destiny 2. I yeah. is, that, is that the final word that it's just your uh, your in-game character customization? Yeah, it's just the way they look. It's no, it's nothing else. Yep. That's what matters. You wasted it's three years of your life. <clears throat> Honestly, though, hey, shut up! It was one and a like half when, slash two. Yeah. It's kind of like when someone shows me their their like final Pokemon team. If you don't have your starter in there, I don't trust you. Uh, <laughs> no, I trust you so hard. Like not even low key. I'm just Man. like Char- Man, Charizard is crazy. It's got tossed aside so early. Yeah, but seriously, people, people, when someone shows me their top six, like you're go- you're going against Elite Four, but like 
are, are you just doing a training session? If they don't, <laughs> seriously, like, I think they're just going through it to like level things up. Yeah. Yep. If, if they show me, no, this is my final team. I'm just like, I don't like I you. They, see, you did, you did. I use a rare candy cheat. That's what y'all talking about. Will, what you been playing, bro? See, that's why you probably got that uh, that Mazingo or whatever the fucking uh, glitch Pokemon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, what have I been playing? So we'll talk about what you've been playing. <laughs> Yeah, talk, let's talk yeah, about it. Let's go. We'll, we'll <laughs> say, first of all, Horizon Zero Dawn, still been playing that. Uh, I'm with you, uh, Ashley. Every time I play that game, I only plan to play for a little Just while. Like for 45 minutes. It turns into like five hours, and I can't put it down. Uh-huh. It is phenomenal. Um, what else have <clears throat> I been playing? Uh, I should just... So I've been playing... i played Perception. Uh, hold on, let me actually look at. Let me look at what I've been playing in my archive. I know I've been playing Dream Daddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, by the way, we get Will. Hold on. Will oh yeah, no, we're definitely doing some cosplays. We have to do some some. Uh, and we're gonna play and stream in costume too. So I gotta get a fake baby. Or, I, I am so ready for that. <laughs> I'm gonna cosplay Matt, and he's gonna cosplay. Uh, I think his name was. Uh, Craig. No, Craig. no, um, Craig. Yeah, you're yeah. Craig. And then uh, Dream Manifested here is Hugo. I don't know the characters. Oh my I've God. seen I've seen Image, but I want to bring it up. I'm oh, gonna... I'm gonna I'm gonna bring well, it up on stream definitely. Yes, please, please. Well, okay. So we mentioned earlier briefly. We talked about well, not really briefly. But we talked about Lose Day Tuesday, right? Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah. And so while he was playing this, I mean, while we were on this, he was playing Dream Daddy, and he decided to tell the people that I was going to be Hugo. Yep. And in this particular playthrough, play through, he was hitting on Hugo. Yep. And I said, no. I said, no, Will, I don't want to know. He hit, me, he hit me with the deep voice. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then it transpired, it translated to the Discord chat, and that's how it gets crazy. It just turns up real quick. But, so we are, you actually answered my question before I got to ask. So, you guys are going to do some cosplay streaming of dream daddy uh yes, I, cosplay night i think me and will got a couple of things we we think about doing with dream daddy as well mm-hmm. uh, my hair unfortunately has not gotten back to its length and vigor that it was before i got my hair cut for anything that gave me the job for you motherfuckers but yeah so <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, you fucking, bro, you <laughs> it, so you guys can see we're, on we're screen my down. character uh is on the bottom left and he he he's very. You say yeah. he a lot. I wonder. You say what? I say you're making sure to say he a lot. <laughs> yes, it is, it is a he. He just he just looks a little effeminate. You know what I'm saying? His skin a little smooth. He been using that, uh, that coconut, coconut oil. oil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> coconut oil. I told you the wonders of coconut oil. <laughs> it's glorious. It's amazing. Let me talk about it. Right? Actually, stream. <laughs> yes, it's, it's so God. true. It's good for a lot of different things. The combo mm-hmm. we had, like, at the, uh, the, 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 let me rub, let me rub the coconut oil. <laughs> yep, yep. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's, it has been an absolute, uh, wait, is this a clip or a video that I'm, sh- a skip? I don't know, oh. you, you cutting up, though. But yeah, if you look, so, will to do with the pink shirt with taco meat out, I'm the dash. <laughs> taco meat out, oh my I'm the- I'm the dashing and dumbing that dude in yellow, and Chris is the one with the you the one with the baby strap to the front, right? Yeah, yeah. buddy. Why don't you be? Why don't you be Alan Dracula? From fucking, no, <laughs> Alan from fucking. Uh, no, See, I, but you don't know why I'm saying that. Yeah, I'm saying that you should. If you had to watch that particular stream, you got since I got to be Hugo and do what I had to do, and you got to be Dracula. I'm gonna be Dracula. He I'm tried Dracula. to give. He was yeah, trying to give Dracula that work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with it. This game, this game is, is is just amazing. Like I went into it not knowing what I was getting into, aside from just the general basis. And basically, you're playing as a dad. You have a daughter who's about to go to college, and you move into this new neighborhood with all these other dads. And the dad squad, pretty much. It's dad squad. Yeah, dad squad. Uh-huh. And there are a ton of like dad jokes and puns and like the, the the dialogue <laughs> is so funny, but it's it's so funny 
without being offensive to to what it is paying homage to like gay like gay people basically um or bi whatever it is that you're into like it's it's um it's respectful but it's hilarious like yeah uh-huh. it's very it's very well done it's very well done like you think like oh here's a game you know probably half ass just trying to get you know onto the front page of like uh, steam or something and then you play the game and you're like yo this thing is amazing yeah. and you're just like oh. so what do you do in it it's a dating sim, hmm. so you're basically, you're, just like, oh. you're basically like trying to find your dream daddy. You're trying to go around and figure out, like, yeah, exactly, uh, who you like the most and who vibes well with you, and like all these other things. And it's just like it all, it all just like comes together in a really cool way. Um, I recommend it, even if you aren't into dudes. Um, I'm not either, but I, I a am finding a lot of enjoyment out of it. B, I think more games like this should exist because. Again, Lose Day Tuesday is a game for uh, is the day that we celebrate stuff Ludus. like this. We celebrate lewd things. We celebrate, you know, getting in touch with our, our sexuality. And there aren't enough games that let women take on the role of like looking for other guys or like guys looking for other guys. There aren't there's enough of that. And I think if there was more of that around in all areas that um that we would have some more balance. So this I, game actually doesn't have both sides. What do you mean? So, because I thought, so when I heard Dream Daddy, I thought you were the Dream Daddy trying to get the woman. Oh. But you're, uh, so I, and, and then when uh, I came and I saw you Gil going at Hugo, I was like, I thought it was just two sides and you could choose how you wanted to do things, but it's only the one side? Uh, okay. It's only one side. Oh, whatever. One I was just curious. I didn't, I didn't realize. Though, but it's, right. it's a great way to just uh, raise awareness, too. And it's kind of, you're, you're, you, gain, you, you gain more of your respect for a lot of the culture there, too, as well. I mean, it's, it's, so, you got to look at, like, well, Will does this very well. He plays devil's advocate or whatever. No matter how bad something is, he'll always be like, let me be devil's advocate for a second. I don't want to hit him on the head with like a fucking pillow. And I'm just like, no, Will, silver no. Silver lining. No, no, I'm just kidding. This. Yeah, that damn silver lining. Yeah. yeah, seriously, him and Konami, like that one time he was just like, let me play devil's advocate. I was like, bitch. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I think I, I literally thought we were like, the friendship was crumbling in front of us. This is when uh, Metal Gear 5 was coming out. And you were like, Let's play devil's advocate. I was like, no, no, this is no, 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 fuck Konami. Hashtag fuck Konami, as per usual. As per <laughs> And I, I read a quote the other day, which was, uh, surround yourself with friends who are smarter than you in different areas and learn from them. Oh, and sweet. I think it's important. I mean, it's almost going to at least challenge your thought process. Yeah, it's very important. Those are going to be stagnant and not have yeah, no Yeah, it's enriching hearing other sides. Bro, you die. Yeah. That's without growing. Death is just like I said. The flat line is because there's no growth. There's no activity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> cool. I'm what very... I have been playing? No yes. Wants. What have you been playing? <laughs> Damn it! Why? Oh, I'm what so nice. <laughs> Naomi is like Richard. So yeah, um, I've been playing a couple of different things. Tekken is always going to be in that furry right, because no? I'm trying to go to more tournaments, but. We played a Destiny 2 beta, you know what I'm saying? We did that. It was a thing, and it was awesome. I um, played. Oh, you haven't played it? it? No. So the Destiny 2 beta does not have, well, it has the, you had, you know, you, they give you a mission, a story mission, and there's a strike. So what I want to say certainly is that there's a big improvement into the cinematics of the story. Um, from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2, there's a huge jump story-wise and, and graphical fidelity. Yay! Like it's, yeah. it's it is really big, like the especially the dynamic lighting. That's really the biggest thing. Um, Not only that, but just like the the, the new um, they took a page out of Overwatch's book. Did you see that? Where even if you tag someone a few times, you still get the, the kill. Oh and yeah, that helps people. That helps a lot of people. It's oh yeah, certainly, certainly. It's lovely because then it becomes more. More catered to even the casual, the even casual shooter fans. That's what Overwatch did, and now it's like, mm-hmm. look, I love Overwatch. I'm always going forty and three, but in reality, you go like ten and like three. But no one says that. You're just like, yeah, sure, hum- yeah, sure, pumpkin. You know, <laughs> like, hey oh. man, I'll be going in, bro, on Overwatch, whatever. Exhibit so, <laughs> and the multiplayer was fun too. I found uh, me and because me and my homeboy Tech. Um, we were dual streaming that. We found we had much more fun playing the actual competitive version, which was a little very similar to Search and Destroy. Yes. Um, Destiny. It, it's very fun and it's very tactical. 
you know, sometimes you get in there with some some scrubby randoms. But other than that, it was really good. Um, I'm just hoping to see a lot more because we didn't you really didn't get to see any of the PvP or the open world aspect of it. I know they released what is it like there was a big social area that they released um, once it was open for everybody. I didn't play that. I didn't really care about that. Um, I know Will personally, he's not happy with the four v four multiplayer. No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Person, the thing is, person, like, let's say me, let's say we all try to play Destiny together, right? How many people are in our regular group of people we used to play Destiny with all the time? I can guarantee you it's more than four. So why in fucking God's name would they take... Okay. It's more personable. What they wanted to do is... I guess... They well, should make that an option, not a standard. Well, did is did they confirm it? I haven't been keeping up with any Destiny 2. I played the Have beta, and the only thing that was available was only 4v4. In their Maybe. confirmation on when they revealed the game... It said competitive multiplayer will be 4v4. Okay, if they said that, then I I can only think the reason why they dropped it down from 6 to 4 or 5 to 4, whatever it was, is maybe that it got too hectic and it, with the 5, you know, the 5v5, five, 6v6. Five, five, six 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 it's 6, it was 6. Yeah. It was 6, oh, it was 6v6. Yeah. Six six. Okay, they wanted to make it a little bit more like a tight end squad, <clears throat> less chance of people throwing. I, mean, I used to see that a lot. I used to see a lot of just come in, just not do work, and just expect to be carried for, for whatever. You know, I don't know if they even fix the whole, you know, like the loot system and the art, you know, and like RNG's like style of loot. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been keeping up with Destiny too. I just played the beta. It was fun to know. Just... Yeah, so you guys play with a lot of people. I only ever play with two other people. That's because you're always hiding. <laughs> you you always hide it. You don't want to hang with the cool kids. You want to be over there at your own lunch table and whatnot. You th really think it? I I just yeah. think I have that many friends. I like, sit I in that corner just... over there and rock back and forth. And say, yes, you don't want to play with me. God, well, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, the, he's the emotional one. Me. I was like, like I went to the board game store and they asked me if I wanted an extension for one of my game, like the expansion, so more people could play. And I was like, you think I have more than four friends? Oh my god, like, that's so adorable and sad at the same time. Yeah, yeah, but I bought it because they had green, and green's my favorite color. So you're just like, but it's green. Okay, okay. So, oh, yeah. more friends? No, it's no. I just, I don't, I don't like. Yeah, I mean, when I when I start now, I know a lot more people, but like. When I started playing, I got Xbox only because it was a way to keep in touch with some of my friends in the States. Oh, um, and I didn't know that many people who were playing. And even when I, like, posted a thing on, like, Facebook being like, hey, like, who wants to play? It was kind of... Oh, I'm, I'm pretty remote. I read a lot. And I spend That's a lot of time by myself. So, I don't know. Maybe I have <clears throat> friends who actually want to play with me, but I think no you one do. does. Oh, I want to play with you. Well, okay. You, you do, Ashley, do. You yeah, do. Yeah, get it, Ashley. I, like I would like to play with more people. It's just like, I have a hard enough time <laughs> when I want to do a raid. I'm just like, oh, I have to find three people. That and was, I live by like, the raid. I live by the raid. You can ask these. I was always raid. I'm always searching for more people to play. Now like, you have matchmaking for raids. It's revolutionary. You don't need to go matchmaking because you got friends now. You look lonely friends before now you got it was friends. Like me yeah no they I, the way that they unveiled that they were going to have matchmaking for raids made me want to punch a fucking rabbit like they were just Why like, rabbit a whole thing specifically <laughs> a rabbit because it was just like, they literally they, the little words were we he knows were, it's really who knows you have a like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the rabbit. <laughs> they, they said specifically they said Man, we had this really awesome system in our game that people don't have an opportunity to use. How do we figure out a way to bring people into the raid system? And we thought about it for months, and we decided, let's make matchmaking. Like, fuck you! We've all been asking for that from the very beginning. That's not revolutionary. You the, don't have to first figure fucking, it out. You just had yeah, to put it fact. in. The first, like, hey. 150,000 tweets were like, their matchmaking sucks. <laughs> Non-existent. <laughs> Get him, Princess Giggle Snort. Yeah, he over there talking about bun. We can't let that happen. Now. Exactly. Exactly. You know, my 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 stuffed animal is named Bun, and he's a bunny, and he's my. You've offended everyone, Will. How dare you? Punch him. Seriously. Am I gonna have to come years? for you yes. in defense of Bun? Yes. <laughs> I'm so feisty. 
What a mop. I feel like Ash is one of the I've never seen that like, much cute oh, feist in my life. Well, and then I, was, I was a different person when I played rugby, though. I think I, I used all the aggression back then. And all that's left is sweetness now. Um, <laughs> she got a lot of her. I used it all. I see, I see. So, what else I've been playing aside from Destiny 2? Like, well, I tried the Final Fantasy yeah, 15 yeah. beta yesterday. Well, no, no, no. Was it yesterday? The day before yesterday. <laughs> And I mean, it's it's okay. Um, they've told us about multiplayer nearly a year ago. So the first thing that I saw that when I when I booted it up is they only give you there's two faces from which you can be derived. Right? Is what they call ancestry or whatever. Now, and so at first I was like, dang, you can't have any other, you know. Flavor. It's a character yeah, flavor, yeah. you know. what I'm saying I can't handle different flavors of my ice cream. <laughs> so I, I was, I was, I was pretty peeved off rip, but you can at least shade, cut, change the shade. Um, I'm assuming that later that because it is just a beta, you know, they just want to throw some, um, some skeleton type of stuff on there. So I'm assuming there will be more. There are plenty of other uh, squares and slots and such. Um, so customization wise, aside from that, is very in depth. You can change a lot of things. Um, in the beta, the costume itself, though, is pretty weak. Even though you can change the color, you can you can change the color. So if you have that kind of patience and creativity, I'm sure you can make something great, even with what they give you. But when it comes to the gameplay, the gameplay was fun. The multiplayer was fun. I think that it's kind of the matchmaking is kind of silly. Fine. <gasps> I'm sorry. So, are you expecting us to be surprised? So no. So <laughs> all right. So you can you can you can just match make right, and match making is all fine and dandy. However, I found myself I had to, there was a couple of times I actually had to uh, just close the game because I don't know not everybody would ready up, and once that happens, like you can't just leave. You can't just leave the instance or whatever. So we exactly we were trying to I was trying to do this mission and we had people in there, people were running off to different directions. Nobody would ready up, and so like that that's pretty frustrating. But I will say it is very promising though, because the couple of missions I did go where people were playing, oh we was whooping some we were whooping some major ass out there. It's uh, almost it was as if teamwork makes the dream work. Oh. oh! Also, that's a play on your name. What do you mean? It's his name. It's his. Name. Shut up! <laughs> I love behind me like, so no, please clip that. Must we form the dream? He's like the dream team. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> My friends all roasting me in the back. They're like, Thanks. <laughs> "They don't know." We we'll let it slide. We we'll let it slide. It's a daddy game. <laughs> No, oh, on the angel mind. <laughs> Sorry. You want to play? Go ahead and play it. That's what you need to play. Go ahead and play it. Yeah. And you can create your character. You could call it well. Black, we'll call his black. So you call yours. Uh, Named the black. Interesting. Black. <laughs> yeah, we talk about Dream Daddy character. Black. We talk about black. Is what we talk about. Oh, black Billy. No, we, your Dream Daddy character yeah. black. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, no, I. Uh, so for some reason, instead of. <laughs> I, I didn't think about the context of how my name would be addressed in the game. Um, huh. So I named my character Black Oni. And then he just kept going up to people and going, Hi, my name... Oh, wait, well, you know. Hi, I'm Black. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was, like, how he introduced himself to people. So it's just like... What? 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 It's happening. <laughs> and, like, it's like, oh, oh, hi, uh, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I'm Black. It's like... Fuck! I didn't think this through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of those moments where you're like, oh, it's probably just so you know, it saves my name or whatever. Yeah, my name is black. Like, all right, I can fucking, I can work with that. Yeah, and then you're just like, I yeah, like. yeah could have planned this one better. <laughs> you know, like the first dialogue, so he was funny. Like, like, Bitch. <laughs> fucking well. What would you, bro? Alrighty. So now I mentioned earlier that I am trying to do more tournaments. Now. Yeah. Well, Will, you know, you play fighters too. I do. You know what I'm saying? When you when you go on, you go hit up a tournament, you know what I'm saying? Before you get old. You guys really could have come. I guess I think Defend the North had tech in, didn't? Oh, they, no. they did. They did, Defend yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not. I ain't got the money to be traveling. I'm doing stuff that's local right now. You know yeah, I'm saying the cheap stuff. Plus, right. chippy chippy. Um, I think we should plan out. You know, in this time of series, because I'm I'm my friend uh, Danny over there, and I have Sharoni, which Will has met, and another friend of ours, Mark, who are amazing fighters, and we want to kind of be like, yo, let's go make some history happen. You know, like two. You know, people that no one never heard of just go in and take people by storm. Like, okay, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Don't get me wrong, but like they're putting the time in. Okay, I I mean, I hope to. I hope to be able to do an Evo. I hope Step to be up. able to do an Evo. Well, look, see, part of the thing, the part of the thing also that I also want to get into is like some of the commentary aspect. Like, actually, one of my friends, my one of my roundtable on Xbox, his cousin. Um, was that defend? This motherfucker made top uh, top eight and didn't go. Wait. Oh my god! Yeah, well, he lost by technicality. Yeah, wow. I get on Xbox and Chris, Chris uh, Brown was like, "Hey, Dream, hey, Dream, let me tell you something." So you know, I told you my cousin be playing right. Yeah, this motherfucker <laughs> made it to top eight and he didn't go. I was like, "Oh, <laughs> was he? Was he?" I said, what, "Was he sick?" No, he's just a lazy. <laughs> Damn. That dream right there. That could have been a dream. That could have been a dream right there, you know? Like yeah. Yeah, we'll see. In terms we'll of, see. In terms of if I will personally go to a tournament, I don't know. Can you go to it? I don't know, man. Like why? Because A in order to do really well consistently in tournament situations, you have to train. And yep. train it. Train it. And you have to know the matchups. You have to know how to punish each situation the proper way. You have to know how you respond to situations under pressure. <clears throat> I respond pretty well under pressure, but the thing is, like, I only have so much time in a day. If I'm going to go to a tournament, if I'm going to become a competitive fighter, I got to go hard. But, like, I don't have the you know, time have to. So, like, no, you got to dedicate all your stream time to it, too. And I gotta, then, yeah, and we then, can dedicate some of that stream time, ill will. But well, it's that's not what I'm saying, though. Like, there's so many, like, I can I can play, like, one of the things I play, I used to play a lot of, especially, was Street Fighter V. I adore that game. I love it. Um, and if anyone else wants to know, my main is Laura. My second main is Chun-Li. Um, I haven't played a game in months. Um, I'm looking forward to playing it again, but... A Laura player actually just took out Punk and Smug. Yeah. Are you talking about Strider? Uh, uh-uh. I, um, what's the fuck his name? Hold, please. Continue. I'm gonna yeah. look it up. Um, Isn't Laura, like, super broken right now? And right hand, I think she's, like, super complicated. In who broken? Laura? Yeah. Really? Uh, like, she's the right character hand. who has, who has item. some clear... Item. Item? She has some yeah. clear disadvantages to using her. Um, yeah. Like... Is she like a glass cannon as well? No, she has pretty good. Uh, she has pretty good like health pool, but the thing is, she doesn't have many good defensive options or reversal options. So like, if you're if someone's applying pressure on you and you're in a block string or they're getting you in frame traps, you have to wait your turn. You can't just you you have a you have maybe one option of things you can do to break through their defense while they're applying pressure. Aside from the the uh, V reversal, <laughs> other than that, you have to wait your turn because. She has if you a, mess up, they're going to get fucked. If you mess up, they're going to open you up and fuck you up. But the same thing goes for her. She's a very momentum-based character. So if you can get on a rhythm and you can get the other player guessing what you're going to be doing, and if you get the right reads at the right times, you're going to decimate them. And that's one of the reasons okay. why I love her. She's like, if, if you can get in and scare your opponent with her... You're gonna fuck them up, and it's so exciting fuck because she has yeah. she has strong like special moves, but she also has like strong grapples. So um, right, okay. Yeah. So I, I I don't play um except for like casually here and there when I'm at a friend's house or something. But when I was at Defend the North, um, you know, just I was talking to a lot of people, and like I like to learn, so like I'm watching and asking questions and things like that. Yeah. Because like I said, I'm so casual when it comes to it, and what better place to learn than with people who are really playing and training and stuff so there was a lot of talk about laura and yeah the advantages to to playing her and why she's really popular yeah 
Yeah, she's great. I really want to. I want to learn Balrog and Karen. Yeah, I Yo. said it because Smug and Punk be doing some work. They but do I don't some know. I don't know. Serious <laughs> work with. Her. Are you kidding? <laughs> like the shit you could do with Balrog is. If there's any character in the game is broken, it's him. <laughs> but the, the good thing tap. is, Laura's a good counter to him. Like she's actually oh. really good against him. And like I said, I don't prove that. But the past two weeks, he beat Smug and Punk. Like I think he three o Punk. And Man, he three o. He three o punk, yeah. Against Kadeem, Laura isn't that good though. <laughs> he had the right. See the thing. So what he, he said was right about that. He said he said Punk was still definitely his hardest competition, yeah. mainly because like he studied a lot for Karen. Yeah, because you know, Karen stud- is a is a hard counter against. I feel like a hard counter against Laura. So he said he studied, but yeah, man, like there really is a lot that goes into it, and I learned that. So outside, so. Personally, like, there's a lot of people that read frame data. I don't, right? Inherently, you begin to learn frames only because by eyeball, trial and error, you see that, okay, when I do this, he keeps doing this fucking move. Yeah. Or when he does this move, I can, oh, I, oh, shit, I can slip this move in. Yeah. That is frame data. You just not, you know, per I'm se, look at, at it. it. Yeah. So that that's the way that I go. <laughs> that's the way I go about it. Like, I don't think I'll ever be able to sit down and just read frame data. I've tried. Before. It's not for me my biggest thing is playing different people playing different characters because the hardest thing i find is that you get that character that no one ever uses and you don't know what their fucking mix-ups are yeah right. so you just like oh, that's shit. one of the reasons why found uh slips people up so much is because they're so not used to going against him or or playing as him that you know when you're playing um, Street Fighter Five, and you go against a fan. You're like, "Oh shit, what the fuck does he do again?" <laughs> oh, that's the Valdo type character. Yeah, he's annoying. Yeah, but, yeah, but in terms of like why I don't, uh, someone asked me about Tekken. Um, I will play that game if it's bought for me. I'm not necessarily super interested in it myself. I like there's other fighting games I do like though. I like Guilty Gear and like Blaze Blue. I like the Dragon Ball Fighter Z, for example. That's going to be amazing. I played that. that. Oh, yeah, we were talking about that before. Do you like Tekken? Do I like Tekken? I used to. Used to a long time ago. <laughs> Not really anymore. I hate I, you. I think <laughs> a lot of it comes down to, you know, I, I talked extensively with Dream Manifested about this. All the time. All the time. <laughs> And I, I, there are some games that inherently have it as a part of their gameplay mechanics. Like, you know, Injustice has this thing, too, where they they have gravity scaling. And the game, the game is so complex in the fact that it relies so much on juggles that it has a scaling feature for gravity. The same with Tekken. If a game has a fucking no, just no, <laughs> I don't want to spend half my game in the air. Right. Rather than like, like I've seen people playing, they they've grounded and they they figure it out. But like, you can be fucking, you can be on the, you can be on the ground, popped back into the air, and that's one of the things I hate about Marvel vs. Capcom three as well. Like there were there were specifically combos that you set up. Oh, assist uh, while you're on the ground, you're still on the ground, shoot him off the ground, and then get him in the air again. Blah blah. It's like no, bro, square up. You get me in your shit. All right, cool, cool. All right, let's get back up and square up again. Like not square put the up. controller <laughs> down and call it a day. <laughs> I hate you. Oh, I can't stand you. You know I'm right. <laughs> I mean, you're partially right, but you exaggerate like a motherfucker. If you are laid flat, you cannot get scoot back up. But if your back if you is are flat, complete, but your legs are up, then you some other shit can happen to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that general? Like, if your back is flat and your legs are up, so that's some that shit. shit. <laughs> is that sound? That sounds like some Blues Day Tuesday shit, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. You're about to get fucked up. You're about to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Your legs are in the air. You're just <laughs> it's all fair game. <laughs> all righty. And so right around the corner, we actually have a couple of new games coming out, which I actually found out recently are much cheaper than I thought. So I might end up getting both of them. Sure. And this would be Hellblade and Lawbreakers. Mm-hmm. So I've been try to put some of the pressure on Will, me and a couple of my dudes are going to have this on PS4. I'm trying to get Will to get Lawbreakers on PS4. What you going to do, Will? What you going to do? Um, 
So. Uh, he about to break my heart. I'm not gonna break your heart. I have to. I have to figure some things out. So, I just bought uh, a new monitor. So I'm using my new setup right now. That's why my this. this yeah, I was gonna be like, yeah, it looks a little different. <laughs> yeah, it looks totally different. And and once you see Chris, uh, like when you come over, you'll see like this whole space is totally different. Pretty dope right now. I spent money. And <laughs> You know, these <laughs> things that you do to improve the quality of your stream, improve the oh, yeah. quality of the viewing experience for people, sometimes cost money. So, yeah. investment in yourself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, we got to see that return. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's on return. main stage at E3. Leave him be, bitch. <laughs> Continue. Maybe, <laughs> maybe one day. Um, I. I am looking to get Hellblade. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue. I think uh, I might be able to get a code from the. I, I actually want to pay for it. Like I just asked them if they can get it to me early so I can start streaming it early, but that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> for Lawbreakers, I I haven't played it on PS4 yet. I haven't played it at all on PS4, but I have played it on PC, um, and I had a lot of fun playing it. Both me and uh, It's Yodu, we played on PC together. Um, and the more I played it, the more it's kind of obviously people are going to compare it to Overwatch. I would say it's like Overwatch in that, like, on surface level, it looks one way, but once you start really getting into it and understanding the meta, it now, like, this is actually a bloody game, too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's difficult, it's like it's very skill based, it's very like be on top of things. So, like, one of the reasons why I want to do get it on PC is because I want to continue getting better using mouse and keyboard. Um, yeah. I'm obviously more comfortable with a controller, so that's why PS4 is really appealing to me. Because usually, you know, when I played the Destiny beta, I was fucking everybody up. <laughs> I was just giving it to everybody. But you like giving it to folks. <laughs> you know what sucks is like I on that. No, no, I'm not going to tell you what sucks. <laughs> 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 I want to get better with keyboard and mouse, but just at the same time, so many games coming out for PS4, so you're like, oh, I'll take a break from keyboard and mouse, come back, everyone's back better and you're sitting there like mm -hmm. Fuck! We'll catch, we'll catch up yeah. yeah and then you're like oh i'll catch up and you go hardcore grind on the week on pc and you're like all right my skills have improved they're shaking up the rust oh look another ps4 game or another console uh, controller based uh, game and you're just mm -hmm. like this is an endless cycle of hate <laughs> but it comes down endless cycle of hate it's true <laughs> i know but it at the same time it kind of gives you challenges to work towards <laughs> Okay, and so, so he go. We gonna get it. We're gonna, they're gonna find a way to get it. If not, I guess I'll have to be the one that does all the adjusting because he's such an uppity little bitch. I guess I'll get PUBG on my laptop and we'll be able to play it in. Because you got you got PUBG, don't you, Chris? Yeah, he does. Ashley, do you? No, I don't. But I want to. Yeah, you're gonna get it. I um, know. <laughs> I know. I am. Yeah. Bet, 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 bet. But in Hellblade, well, so. 20, the twenty nine ninety nine price point. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Does, is that something that's going to eventually change how we yes. are going to be given games? Because Hellblade and Lawbreakers, I mean, well, Lawbreakers is essentially just a, a PvP game, right? Yeah. Like Overwatch. But Hellblade is supposed to be a full length game. Is it going to be full length? Did they say? I'm not. I'm asking. Really, I'm not sure. I think it's. It's going to be a concentrated experience. Um, okay. I think it's going to be probably less time than something like Horizon Zero Dawn, which can go up to so like 40 hours. It's definitely not going to be as long as that. Um, okay. It's going to probably be like a five to seven hour game, if I'm guessing right. Huh? Oh, that's them talking about the back. I'm sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're good. Um, <laughs> I... I think thirty dollars is really fucking awesome. I think I think an opportunity to give people a break on their wallets is really great. I oh I, yeah. The reason why, even if they gave me a code, like I I want to buy the game because I want to support them because they're a like taking a risk with making something like this. They're like a, a indie developer. Um, Ninja Theory, they did uh, Enslaved, they did the DMC reboot, which I still don't think I like. Needed. I don't fucking mm -hmm. everyone fight me. I don't fucking care. DMC reboot was good. Mm -hmm. I'll take 
They could have done. They could have. They could have made it a different thing. They didn't have to make it Devil May Cry. I think that's a problem that people had. That I had oh. is that they didn't need. Yeah, to, everyone is stuck on nostalgia. I'm well, sorry, but I'm they, gonna they need to reboot it if that's the case. Why use that property if you're gonna do something that's not connected at all? I I think they were telling. They were trying to tell a, a, a different story. So and, use different characters to tell that story. Oh, I like that's the, the same Dante, but like in a. You know, like he's a bad boy, like rock. Like a lot of people, are like oh, he's like not the same one. He's like an emotional bitch. The writing was different. I'm like, it's the same thing with comic books and movie adaptations, or books and movie adaptations. It's as well. when they do it's it like, too, though. Yeah, but I mean, like I, I liked it because it's so funny I'm, to see the I'm obviously in the very. I, I know, right? Will and I never like disagree <laughs> at all at things. So it's like the first time that we disagree. Everyone's like. <laughs> but, but I mean, this is the same vein. Me and Tate, we were streaming the other day. But this is the same thing with the new God of War. It could have personally. Right. I think it should have been a completely different IP. We talked about that when it. Yeah, yeah exactly. We, yeah. The difference yeah. between those is that this is a continuation of God of War. What they did with DMC was not connected at all. No, it wasn't connected. It was a complete reboot and like, a different telling of the same. Uh, story. Like not even the same story. It's a different telling. It's with not even the same story at all. <laughs> but well. <laughs> oh, that's, that's why I like, with God of War, I can make like, that argument against that because like it is a continuation it's an evolution of characters it's, not yes. a reimagining of a character but the thing is like I would be like alright cool like reimagine a character like if they decide to do that now they'd be like alright it's been enough time for us to just like have gotten over it like they did that pretty like fairly they did that pretty quick I will give you quick. that because like, DMC 4 hit and then it was like what 4 years maybe even it was Maybe no, when they an- at least when they announced. And I'm just like, when they announced, are you yeah, rebooting it was like this? Points. Like when they rebooted Spider Man three times, we didn't need them to reboot <laughs> it that many times. We did it. They rebooted this shit so much. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, like, give it a break. <laughs> no, that Spider Man reboot was ridiculous because it's like, how many times are we going to see Uncle Ben die on screen? <laughs> <laughs> Every time this. someone went in for a reading of Uncle Ben, they're like, God damn it, man. <laughs> God fucking damn it. I know what's going to happen. Do you want us to read the script? No, pretty much. I'm proud of you, Peter. Or, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. You got the part. You know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we get it. You know, he died. It, yeah, it should have had his own identity. And that's the point I'm making. Like, if you if you think about it, Bayonetta could have been Devil May Cry. The way that the gameplay worked and, like, it oh, was yeah. having in hell. They could have decided to make it a, a Devil May Cry game. But they decided Devil to make Devil something totally new with that. And it Good. fucking oh. worked. You know what it didn't work for? Uh, Dark Hokage. Dante's <laughs> Inferno, Heavenly Sword. Heavenly Sword didn't work. Who was playing Heavenly Sword? I didn't play Heavenly Sword. I played the fuck out of that yeah. game. You kidding me? Yeah, I have that right on my shelf right now. I could whip that Bro. out. Did you play Dante's Inferno? No. I played I didn't. Ammo. <laughs> you oh, you did? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought you said you did. I did. But like I, what it comes down to is, I will agree that it happened way too fucking fast. Like if the DMC, if a DMC reboot was announced now, it'd be perfect time. It would be about ten years roughly. roughly. I liked it. I don't care. Like I mean, a lot of people say if it didn't have Dante as the main character and it was something else, another son of Sparta or whatever, if it wasn't Dante and Virgil, it would have been a per- it would have been a smash hit. Yeah. I I disagree. I I think that a lot of people have such a hard on border for nostalgia, especially with Devil May Cry, because everyone is used to seeing, oh, you know, they're they suave, you know, like trash talking, you know, like pun master fucking Dante and all that. And you're just sitting there and you're like, yeah, I get it. But like I mean, I like a breath of fresh air in games that I'm like heavily invested in. I really do. Like if they rebooted Final Fantasy thirteen, which they will obviously <laughs> if they rebooted I, I which one? No, I'm saying if they rebooted Final Fantasy thirteen. Like they rebooted it like a different like. Man, let me just let this shit go, bro. <laughs> I mean, I I have enjoyed it. I'm I'm not one of the people that think 15 was trash by any means. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see what kind of dimension is added once the multiplayer is really in there. Um, but will to go back to you talking about the price point of Hellblade. So at 29.99, would Order of 1886 be more? Happily received. Oh, absolutely. I think oh, yeah. I think eighteen eighty six was a really it had its flaws, but just like any other game, that game was fucking dope. Like that game was great. Yeah, that people talk was- so much shit about it because like, oh, it's corner shooter, it's too too cinematic and it's only thirty frames per second. Like, bro, 
Look at the game. Who the hell cares about the frames for real? There, there, I mean, there are people who come into my own stream talking frame data bullshit. All right. <laughs> you just like enjoy the damn game, guys. Yeah. Please. You, you read too much into it. You're gonna. You might as well just fucking start applying everywhere because you know so much about frame data. Just apply somewhere, make the game better, and then become the positive oh, impact yeah. that you want to see in the in the gaming industry. You know what I mean? Just don't go in somewhere and be like. Let me spread my negativity. Yeah, we don't fuck with negativity. Though, like, I know. That's the I get so tired of having this like conversation where, which is essentially the like, why you gotta be so mean yeah. conversation. Yeah. I know. I, I agree with you. It's like we're shouting into the fucking void. Yeah. I'll be like, I'll be like, you know, like just be nice, goddamn it. What is it? You know, it's not that hard to be a little bit respectful, but no, apparently it makes people's skin crawl. Like, all yeah. the human beings, I mean, right? defended at all times so i'm like i don't care if you're like you come out like that it's just like it should be defended all the time I don't know. That's just, you know, it's like be nice to each other. Well, all like, mm-hmm. well, that's one of the reasons actually that you mesh so well with the group because we are very much believers in positivity and working through and spreading positivity so we fucks with that you know what I'm we fuck with the positive yeah mm-hmm. got it and it's perfect because once you fill your life with positivity, it'll hold up better. Because like, you don't worry as much about everyone else's negativity. And you just create a you know, the positive environment people will follow. AKA will roll that down. Because he does on his streams, and then everyone's like, oh, you're the perfect. Yeah, because Will could be a douche sometimes. Sometimes I wish he would. Every every now and then, well, it's not really a douche. Sometimes I, I love your would face, be a Will. No, sometimes mm-hmm. I wish you would just like cuss people out, which is so nice. You let it happen and you do it in such a nice way. I'd be like, mm. wait, wait, I'm of glad. What, I'm, I don't know. Sometimes people be just, you know what I'm saying? They, they sometimes people are a little extra. They try. And me, per- you know what I'm saying? They, they just, sometimes people be extra. That's all I'm going to say. Sometimes some people be extra. But, uh, Dude, yeah. A cosplayer <laughs> who's a woman who streams. Like you want to talk oh, about people being oh, I extra bet. with even comments? I, yeah, I don't. I don't even want to know the comments because I know the comments. Seriously uh, though, like, yeah. like, and you know what? Like, it comes. I, I don't know. I know I talked to Will about it, but like, I was sculpting one day. Like, leg- I'm sculpting. Like, there's no question about it. I'm in like a full long sleeve, <laughs> whatever. And these guys come firing in about like having a whore and like whatever and like Damn. just using. This to like for like sexual reasons or whatever i'm just like dude i am literally <laughs> sculpting and it wasn't like anything you i'm were... making masks like blah, i was blah, making blah. masks how like, dare you like, sculpt that mask in a oh, long you're a sure. girl. Blah, blah, right? blah. yeah no and, yeah, and people just want to spread this like negativity and like i i don't you always got clothes on though <laughs> right. i know i know and like i'm actually and i think because i'm like extremely cautious oh. about it like being a female content creator is hard and like anyone who knows somebody who, you know, is really active with like social media and putting things out there. Like if you, if you know, like not like I, I'm sure it happens to guys too, but I talk to a lot of women that it does happen to as well. And it just seems like, you know, no matter what you do, you're going to get get those comments. And it's just like, how, how, and like, like, I'm, I'm fully cut. I make a point to be fully covered. Um, when I stream because I'm so aware of it and still still you, like I don't know people are, are weird how dare you use your body for you know monetizing you know monetizing games and how dare you do this it's like bro I'm gonna fucking even if, do, even if you do it's like it's that's fine. You, then that's, that's not your channel business. and just don't watch but like you know I don't and I still get heat for it yeah. well see that's the thing I mean like everyone's allowed to be as you know to to do what they want with their own body. It's their own body. Why are you going to impose onto others? You know, yeah. Their, yeah. Their way of life. Just chill the fuck out. You know, just, just le- like oh. let them do them. <laughs> they're not hurting you. Like if they're not, you know, doing something to you. I. That's how I see it. That's how I live my life. Which is like, you know, you do you. But if you're hurting people, then it's a problem. But I don't see why if someone is streaming and whatever low cut shirt I or to, like. Well, first of it. all. Totally agree with you. If you if you decide you want to go on with a low cut shirt, regardless or basically not being wearing anything at all, like first of all, my thing is if you're gonna be on Twitch, at least no, don't be on here because you're just trying to make a quick buck. You can tell who those people are. But like even if you do like show some you know some cleavage or whatever, or you're, you're being like, uh, let's just say cares? it's your favorite like, tea. Just like, like whatever. Why, why does it have to be a bad thing? I happen to like video games, art, and beautiful lemon. If I can get all of those in one place, like. 
I'm good. <laughs> so like that's not a that's not an issue. I used to get it a lot more than I do now. Um, yeah. And do you I think it's because you have such a big and strong and healthy community wow. that it kind of like filters out that kind of attitude? I think that's right. part of it. And I think yeah. also the people who have tried it with me before, maybe maybe this is it. Maybe there's something totally different. But um, when they when they would come in, I would just be like, hey, by the way, thanks for helping my channel grow. Like you're literally adding numbers to my metrics. You're being yeah. a dumbass. I'm still going right. to ban you. But thanks for the metrics. Right. Like. That yeah. one, yeah, thank not, you. Not get blocked. How do you know, like, you know, and it'd be the sweetest thing in the world because at that point, imagine you get like, you know, partnered up because of one, of one yeah. metric number, and you're just like, yo, to that troll that came in trying to fuck with me, um, yeah, me get because partnered. of you, I got partnered. So, yeah, yep, you know, like, get well, someone here. asked me, like, why do you ban them? Because, uh. You know, like, like as in genuinely, they're like, well, that's less people to watch your channel, and it was like not about that, but it's yeah. about your, it's about the channel environment. So yeah. let's say, thank you, yeah, they make they yeah. make you uncomfortable. They can make someone uncomfortable in the channel, or even if you might have someone in your channel that's gonna, you know, what, you know, fuck this dude, and they gonna start having an argument. Now it's just exactly. a it happens pain all the ass. time, and I'm I'm super thankful that people, you know, come to my aid and stuff. Um... But yeah, like, I don't want to cause them stress. Because if I saw, I get, like, super defensive when it comes to my friends. Like, there's a lot of things that I can take calm, cool, collect when it comes to me. But when it's, if you're attacking a friend of mine, like, the fear is going to come out. So, like, I feel like it's uncomfortable for my community and my friends on on Twitch. If they're in there and someone's acting like that, it's kind of like, oh, Kester, hi! Sorry, anyway, I just saw some, speaking of which, (laughs) Judy is super supportive. Um, You know, it's, it's one of those things where I feel bad for them because it puts them in a situation where they want to, like, you know, grab the pitchforks. Yeah. And, um, it's yeah. So you it, can help control that, too, because it's like, I know a lot of people that just go, hey, here's a picture and here's the person's name, which one? And that's not good either because it's like it creates toxicity within the community as well, you know? It's, you're, you're banning them so your peace of mind can can affect your your stream when you're calm cool collected and your you know your friends your twitch followers are calm cool and collected as well then the stream becomes a happy place and that increases the quality of the stream and ergo brings you know brings up a better a better viewing and you don't have to worry about all the trolls and the negativity too. true yeah i mean again like I, <clears throat> the reason why a lot of trolls do what they do is because they want to get a reaction out of you um, no, it's true. The internet is obsessed with reactions. Like some of my most popular videos on YouTube are reactions. And oh yeah, far out. And I see, because like, I mean, I've I've been curious about those. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear it's going well. Yeah, no, it, it's it's definitely been a huge component, and I think people genuinely like to see that. And so that's one of the reasons why. Um, <clears throat> this is one of the other things I kind of wanted to mention earlier about advice for streamers um, is having a face cam, and. Again, I know that's... Re- <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's the nice <laughs> <most cool. laughs> Page just went on fire. <laughs> Someone clipped that. I know they did. <laughs> Please, you didn't ah, Please did. do it. People get clipped after the stream. That's a fucking wonderful thing. But um, <laughs> I, I think... Um, I think a big component to one of the reasons why I like watching some people on subs. <laughs> one of the reasons why I like watching people is because I can... I can a like there's interactivity in the chat, but b because I can I can have some type of connection with myself and the person on the other side. I can see how they're reacting to a situation or how they're responding or how they're like if they if there's a tense moment in the game, I want to see that look of t- intensity in their face <laughs> just like that. And there are oh some streamers out there who can do that without a face cam, and I yeah. applaud them. But at the same time, like. It's not the same for me, and I know having a face cam is a very vulnerable thing. It's like you're literally putting yourself on the internet. But I almost will like not follow or watch someone if they don't have a face cam <coughs> because I, 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 it just doesn't. I feel disconnected from the streamer. More personable if you yeah. stream with yeah. face cam. Yeah. Like, at least I can put the face and I can see expressions and reactions to certain things and what they're doing. You know? Yeah. You're right. Right. For, sure. and, I mean, for me, a lot of my, I guess I rely on hand gestures or making faces to get my point across sometimes. Yeah. Um, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think that it, it definitely, for if I want to share myself, um, 
I find the the visual aspect helps it help helps with like my personality and the way I communicate with people, which is why I asked you earlier because like I want to be streaming Horizon Zero Dawn and I got to get that face cam <laughs> done. Yeah. That's a face cam. That's a face, that face cam, cam done. Yeah, no. And then one thing with face cam, you learn when you start when you have ticks that you really we talked about this about before, yourself. I Because I chew on my, my fucking brother? tongue. You God do. Damn it. Yeah. And I, I, like, I, look, I, look, I look at the corner of my eyes and like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> chew yeah. your tongue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bite down on it. My brother, oh, he's he been our hero, like, super intense. He licks his lips really hard. So I don't even have to watch it. Like, it could be on mute. If I'm just looking at my brother, it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> you think of the fire and flames? Like, that's hey, him. Hey, <laughs> fire and flames. <laughs> So exactly. I had a real problem with Guitar Hero. Like I was legitimately yeah. obsessed. So <laughs> was my brother. That's amazing. Oh I was playing. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So, so how much? Tell us. No, no, no. Tell us how many hours. Give man, it. So Give it. <laughs> all of them. All of them. Not just one. So I mean, you know, <laughs> I had. I had the guitar, but I had no system. So to make sure I didn't lose my skill, I would get on YouTube and I would watch like the top people to play that don't mess up, play the hard songs, and I would play along. And so, like one of the funniest things, like when my homeboy talks about on Xbox, is he's <laughs> he's like, I was going along, and I was like, shit, I messed up. He was like, well, how the fuck do you know? <laughs> I'm like, just, just don't worry about it. Leave it alone. Keep it honest out. with out. yourself. That's so funny. Yeah, that's that's I, had a, I had a real problem. But Kingdom yeah. Hearts 3 was also announced. Yeah. So we know that it's a real thing. Chris? Okay. Well, all right. What? what are you... Yeah, Chris. <laughs> what, can, what can you say? <laughs> what, can you, what can you tell us? That is, it's coming out 2018, so... <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. I'm not, I can't... Nice story. <laughs> That's good. I, I, like I, I, I just... I, like, hopefully, you know, we can't... Until we sign certain things, we can't do anything, so hopefully... He's, uh, he's on a no-talkie-talkie. Yeah. Okay, but NDAs it, are cool. We'll yeah. pester. We'll pester. We'll go in and I will pester our friend over there. Well, but, you know... I credit you with the reason that we have a multiplayer beta for Final Fantasy 15. I credit, I give you the credit for that. I told you, I called it a while ago, didn't I? Before I fucking became 15, I fucking called it. Like, 15 has followed my like my advice. I just sent me like, what else did you say, stupid? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. right. But yeah, no, I was oh, a while ago, before 15 multiplayer got even announced or was even a thought of it. Maybe talked about it during the podcast, yeah, dude. That no, wait a minute. Multiplayer was announced with the announcement of the game. They said it was going to have multiplayer. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. Fifteen. Yeah, they Holy they shit. called it fifteen. When they called it fifteen. The whole, the only thing was a reaction out of it. Like about a year and a half later, two years into development, they um after that, they said that there might be a possibility for uh, multiplayer. But I called it right when it became fifteen, when I, like roughly around the same time in that well. Yeah, like, the, the I called it is one of my favorite things because one person gets super defensive and super like I did, and someone <laughs> yeah. else is always hey, man, like, hey, man, you yeah, it's like that with shows or movies. Not man called it, and then one person, yeah, it's my favorite argue, one of my favorite arguments to watch. <laughs> oh my god, no, it's like not only that, but just like oh my fucking god, like this game has been like I've aged horribly because of this game. <laughs> like I've waited ten years for this fucking game. Ten years, ten years. <laughs> Shit, and then, it's been almost 10 years for Kingdom Hearts 3, too. Yeah, it has. It really has. It really yeah. has. So it's like, it's hilarious when you look at it. I don't mean hilarious in a ha-ha for me. I mean, like, hilarious, like, in a, <laughs> I want to kill I want to go you know? cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But um, getting back to the point, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, um, obviously, you guys seen the trailers. Obviously, you've seen, all the, you know, the, just the battle system, how it's been revamped, even from the first announcement. The, the graphics change as well. In three years, we technology has grown exponentially, including just PS4s in general. But I'm looking at it on the Pro, it's ridiculous. Like, damn, boys. <laughs> this is actually my first time seeing this trailer. I'm, I'm showing people now. This is my first time seeing it. It's, it's like, fucking Toy Story for King dude. Sorry. Oh, that you was didn't know that? No, I knew okay, it, but I just that, didn't that's see it in I action. Said Toy Story earlier. Yeah, no, no, no. no I, I knew about it. Okay. It's going to be crazy. Like, I mean, 
this is going to be one of those games where it's just like they're releasing all this information and we're like, whoa, this is going to be crazy. You know, like there's, you know, they, they already <laughs> told a lot and it's just like, this I have Star a feeling. Wars. Yeah, so bad. Yeah. I want Anakin, I want Anakin, like actual Anakin and fucking Terra to like interact and see how much they like they are. Yeah. Because they are pretty much one in the same with Terra. Like they both, with good intentions, become. Terra's a douchebag. <laughs> but, um, oh, I'm just gonna throw that out there. <clears throat> but I can't. Lie, man. But yeah, dude, it was a fucking. These games have been in development for so long, so ridiculously yeah. long. Like, like you said, we've we've like aged. There's like been a whole generation that is like now yeah. grown up <laughs> since that shit was. Same thing. Like I, ha- I was talking to someone who's 18, but like I didn't know it at the time. And they were like, "Yeah, I love Lincoln Park" because I was listening to a song. And they were like, "Oh yeah, did you grow up on a hybrid theory?" They're like, "What's that?" I was like, "What do you mean?" It's like, "Oh, I had someone who didn't know who Blink 182 was, and for their entire life, Matthew McConaughey has been a serious actor." What? Uh, been a what actor? A serious <laughs> actor, uh, as in like not the you know yeah. like cheesy stuff he used to all do right, all right, you know, yeah but, yeah well that was fine but it's the it's the comedies the romantic yeah. comedies i'm talking about you know so it's, it's just funny yeah the age gap and like it's i said not to... knowing not knowing blink 182 like seriously <laughs> though i was like like how like my sister got into blink 182 because of me and then she's like oh yeah i'm at the blink 182 concert I'm like you couldn't have fucking told me and she's <laughs> watching it without she me went like, without you <laughs> yeah i was a stab in the heart i was literally like Wow, I don't want to talk to you when we get home. We're fighting, <laughs> and like it's so bad. It's so yeah. bad. But yeah, no, it's no, like, weird. And then Kingdom Hearts, yeah, for some people, it's just yeah. always been. They'll uh, pop, they'll, there's there's generations of gamers that grew up playing Kingdom Hearts two as their first Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, like mm. like think about that. Like we were in like middle school slash high, and like you know, like elementary school when the Kingdom Hearts one first came out, and you got to progress from there. And you're like, oh shit, yeah, I remember this like it was yesterday. And then they're just like. What is this? What's birth by sleep? What's 352 and a half days over, you know, like a pie or whatever? And it's like, you're sitting there like, I'm going to go like, jump off a bridge because I'm old, you know? <laughs> it's, like yeah. the, it's like kids are getting younger and they're getting better at games and we're just sitting here like, you know, I had to train for like 10 years to get those kinds of skills. This kid comes in, it's all natural to them. And they play on a fucking tablet since they were born. Yep. Yeah, so Kingdom Hearts there again. <laughs> All yep. right, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that yeah. pretty much covers all the topics that we had. Did anyone else have anything um, that they want to bring up, or were there any questions yeah. from the chat? I saw something uh, like on Twitter lately. I don't know if you guys have already posted it already, but I had a conversation with someone the other night. It's the top five video games, like for you. Like, what are your five favorite? <laughs> Um, and I, I had to really think about this before I could compile my list and I have so many different reasons because it's like, do you go with sentimental? Do you go with gameplay? Do you go with like watershed moments? Uh, because that's a big one for me, like what revolutionized gaming and what points change the way we like we play. Um, so yeah, I, but then also I'm a sentimental person. So how do I not choose the games that took me down this path to enjoy gaming and everything or just like cosplay or yeah. who like put fundamental principles into my my own personal character like you know because we are we are exploring narratives we are discovering characters so yeah there's some i've been seeing this on twitter like top five games have you guys answered this and what are they if so top five games are like there, there's some serious prep work that needs to go with okay, okay. it has to do a lot of thinking i have not later <laughs> emotional <laughs> you know like, I, I can i can give you most of my top fives right now really oh, yeah okay. I guess you might have had this conversation before, though. Yeah. That's yeah, right. okay. All right. Um, Metal Gear Solid 1 is absolutely on my top five. Um, that game, like we were talking about, revolutionized everything, but also it was just fucking good. It was mm-hmm. so good. Um, so many mechanics of it's like, oh, it's everything sentimental watershed it revolution everything in one you know? well that and that was one of the first games that really like tested the fourth wall right yep mm-hmm. and it broke Michael barriers Mace. too like it was literally like oh hey i'm gonna use mind control on you and actually determine what you've been playing lately like wait a minute like, yeah the, the first time to boy. do something t- like what? it's using technology like obviously the playstation has to read the memory card but it's using that in the game as a conversation as part of the narrative like right well i ran out the game room on that first time 
I ran up. I, I looked at my I looked at my brother. He looked at me. We were just like. <laughs> what? Did that, did that just read our memory card. Well, how did he know? Yeah. Well, at the time, you're not thinking about reading the memory card. You're like, how right. did he know? How did he know? But like, that's crazy. Let's go back in time. That's ahead of its time. It was that ahead is of time, ahead of it. Sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's like ten it's years uh, ahead of its time. Easy. Yeah. It read your memory card. It spat back to you what you were playing. It was a certain like cap, in uh, order. In order. Not- yeah, and in order to fight him, uh, you had two separate methods, or maybe three separate methods for a defeating Psycho Mantis, and one of them was taking your controller and putting it in port two. Like, legit, one of the ways, like, the game made you go outside of itself in order to engage with it in different ways, and that was just, like, to get the codec, uh, the codec number to get in touch with Meryl, you had to look at the back of your game case. Because there's no other way to get it. You look at the back and see that, like, you know how, like, on the back of the game case, they have, like, the highlight moments or, like, highlighted things. Yeah. One of them was a codec conversation with a character you never saw. So you take that in and you have a new conversation that you're starting. It's fucking. What? It makes you think outside the box and then you tear it up and then you tear up the box outside of that. That's what Metal Gear 1 was. Yeah. Or Metal Gear on the PS1. It's, it's, ridi- it's ridiculous because that game, that could be a contender for. You know, one of the great kings know. of all time, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because so, what was that? Oh, I was oh. gonna say. So obviously, Metal Gear Solid, Meta, blah, 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 Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> but like, what else? Because I'm very curious. Onimusha <laughs> three. Uh-huh. Yeah. Onimusha. That game. Uh, there weren't that many <laughs> games out at the time that really uh, did the samurai justice in a way that was really interesting, cool. And like I've always loved Japanese aesthetics, mm-hmm. I've always loved Japanese culture. This was a game that like took that stuff from that time and like made it into a holistic experience. And it was just like Onimusha. I played Genma Onimusha, um, and that was like a remake of Onimusha One, just on Xbox. And like I played it so much, it was it had a little bit of Resident Evil in there mixed with like samurai action i was just like this is fucking amazing like there's these enemies are terrifying but i feel empowered at the same time like this right. duality of like i can fuck them up they can fuck me up yep. exactly. so, so it was it was just a, it was a brilliantly done game uh i think the series could have used a revival but i think yeah. another game came came by that uh was able so to revitalize cool. it and yeah um so onimush is definitely one of my other ones um and it's just because, like, <laughs> say that again. Oh no, um, uh, Big Dizzy was just like that on camera though. <laughs> yeah. Like, really oh like, god, that camera fixed was cameras. Tough. That yeah. camera was tough sometimes. It was tough. Well, it was but it was style. cinematic. Yeah. yeah. Um, my third favorite game would probably be Mass Effect Three. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Just, out of all the Mass Effects, the third one. Yeah, Mass Effect Two was was amazing. I loved it. Um, I'd never played Mass Effect 1. I only saw a full playthrough. Not a full playthrough. I saw a lot of the playthrough for it. And that game was 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 really cool because it, it set everything up. Mass Effect 3 was my favorite because there was a point in the game I had become so invested in Mass Effect. I had played 2 so much, played 3 so much. Um, and I, I got really into the characters. I got really invested. I really wanted to learn as much as I could out of them. Like, Literally after every mission, I went to every single person on the ship, even like not NPCs that weren't significant, to see what they would say new. And many of them had new things to say or talk about. And I stopped playing the game for like maybe three or four days because I couldn't decide who I wanted my character to ultimately be with. I have never played a game that made me stop playing it because I was that incisive, indecisive. And that's because the characters just had so many things that I liked about them. I was like, I want my, I want my story. It felt like my story, even though it's still set in particular ways, it felt like my story. I wanted my story to end on the best note possible and I couldn't figure out how I wanted it. Mm-hmm. And Mass Effect 3's ending was not my favorite aspect of the game. <clears throat> Subject to plenty of criticism. Oh, yes. But I think the holistic experience of how they wrapped everything else up aside from that was phenomenal. 
So that's why I say Mass Effect 3 was definitely one of my favorite games. Um, in terms of the other two... <sighs> the hardest I, spots to fill. The, yeah, yeah the, it's, it's tough because, to be honest, this year there have been three games that I could put on my top list of games of all time. Wow. Yeah. This year alone. One being Neo, of course. Yeah, one of them Neo because it filled the gap of us not having any Onimusha for like 13, 15 years. 15 years? It's been a long time, it's bro. It's been a long time. I'm trying to think. Because I was in I was in this house. Yeah. And I was probably what was right? Eighth grade, maybe? No, it had to be a little bit it had to be some in high school, maybe like ninth grade, maybe. I it, think there was like one more. It's insane how long it's been. And, and the fact that Neo took that, mixed in a little bit of Dark Souls, and made it its own thing. Mm hmm. So, the, 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 I, I know what my, my fourth pick is. For my fifth pick, I can't say. So, my fourth pick is Halo 2. Okay. Um, yeah. I played. That, that was my favorite of the Halo series. Yeah, no. Yep. I, uh, fucking. I think amazing. it was a, Halo yeah, 2. I, 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 I played until my eyes bled. <laughs> and I played until I was sleeping with the controller in my hand, and that was the first mo uh, competitive multiplayer game that I became incredibly proficient in. Um, I used to use a sniper rifle as a shotgun. That's how I used to get down. <laughs> Shot at snipes. And I, I would have like a, ba a battle rifle or some other shit, and I would have a sniper rifle, and I would like be up close on somebody, quick turn, shoot them, melee, done. Like that's BXR, 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 BXR. Like I was so fucking good at that game, and I, I used to. There was this guy. Uh, I don't know if he still watches me, or if he even knows that I started a YouTube or Twitch channel. He go. He went by J Dog, and he was so good at the game. Like I played with him all the time, and like I got better because I played with him. And he used to have a whole team of people going against him. Like it would be like twelve people against him, and he would still win sometimes. That's ridiculous. We would team There's up. Like that. <laughs> that's how good people are, though. Like, I mean, yeah. that's how good people are. It's like it's a, it's become their like second nature. They breathe, they live, they live it. And it's yeah. like I wish I was that great. Like, <sighs> sometimes it's naturally, <laughs> it's natural talent. It makes it hard work. Yeah. And you're just a beast. It's like it's like the Sasuke. Of the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're born with a crazy keki genkai and then they get better as they're playing just right like, i have to sit up here just to fucking aim correctly on the like, kaisen <laughs> my fourth <laughs> game i i i honestly that's the one i'm having trouble with so i i can give you my top four my top five i feel like it's hard to fill the last spot because it's like what do you choose yeah that's the that's the problem you know a sentimental one a revolutionary one you know, one that, you know, has, you know, critical opinion that, you know, spoke to you. It's like, there's mm -hmm. five categories for top five. I think that's the best way to do it. But even then, it's still fucking hard. I don't guess right. one was the first game I cried in. Oh, really? Yeah. The first game that made me cry. You, you know exactly which part I started fucking crying. Wait, what do you say? Like, your solitude was the first, like, game that I actually cried to, where they actually could play. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, uh... And it's it's weird too. Like I don't I don't want to spoil anything. Ah no, fuck! It's been long enough. Fuck it. Like yeah, years. yeah. <laughs> it's been literally. I don't want to spoil anything for who? The I don't people know. living in the mountains. I mean, fucking Akisora still hasn't played Metal Gear. People living in the mountains. But Sniper, like Sniper Wolf, is like an enemy. Like she fucking shoots Meryl like through the upper thigh, like through the arm, and like she fucks her up with a sniper rifle, and like you have reason to fucking hate this woman she's like fuck man she just like wrecked fucking meryl meryl's so awesome and she's like wonderful what the fuck and then when you do finally defeat her you're just like oh wow i feel like shit yeah what have i done you know like, what have like, i and she's like bleeding out there she's you no know, she's with her wolves and out in the alaska snow and like the scenery and the autocons coming out he's depressed he's like why would you why did you have to do this? He understands why Snake had to do it, but he doesn't understand yeah. why Sniper Wolf did. So she tells her whole story about how she was left and Big Boss found her and helped her strive through, blah, blah, blah. It's just like the waterworks were out for that, man. I was 
done. <laughs> you know what? Good narratives uh, make you feel something for even people you're not supposed to like, yeah. I find. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if you read Southern Bastards, but okay. It's a, it's a great comic. And uh, the second volume goes into the, um, like the bad guy. And it kind of makes you feel for them. And that's what I find really good is when you can kind of see, when you can kind of understand or empathize with their point, I yeah. think it usually makes them a stronger villain. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's yeah. the best. The best villains are the ones yeah. that have the best. Cottonmouth, man. Yep. Cottonmouth is one of the best villains that I've seen, bro. And, uh, Out of Luke, Alpha Luke Cage. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. He's interesting. He's a really interesting character. Yeah. Even like even in more recent uh, Yeah, the code, man. Art in Azunia. That I won't spoil anything. But Art in Azunia is a very well written character. It's very Shakespearean in the way um uh, Paul uh you know Darren DePaul. Yeah. Voice actor from uh, reads his line. It's very Shakespearean, very very old school but with a hint of you know, like new uh, with with a new way of reading and acting and you can feel like you're you feel for the character and you're like, fuck me. And at the same time, it's just like a good, a good villain is one that you feel for. Mm -hmm. A better character is one that you feel that you maybe empathize with, but also yeah. hate at the same fucking time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I yeah. love I want to help you suck. You know, it's just like, it and creates a, a cut, like, like, a, like, like, a, like a rift in within you. And you're just like trying to ex like, it brings out, like, don't but you feel more human though? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And sometimes, it toys with your definition of what a villain is, right? Yeah. There is no because, black and white. Right, there's, there's no black and white in life. There's, you know, whatever circumstance this person might have had, he had to come up with, or he or she made to come with, this is what they were thrown into as far as life. They have reasons, Circumstantial, right? yeah. The yeah. Circum yeah. things, the circumstance, if you were put in that, would you, would you, can you fault them if you were put in the same place? Are they really yeah. a villain? It comes down to morality, I think, too. Like, it makes you question what is the ethical decision and that's what i think like i said it brings you closer to the to understanding what it means to be human yep <laughs> right and then and then you just look at it and you're like this game fucked me up and then if you're left emotionally drained you yeah. know it i had an yeah. existential right, life crisis after fucking final phase i told you that right? <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, it was so bad like a 10-year wait is over and then like they fuck you up at the end and then i'm like i'm yeah. texting my friends it's like three in the morning and i'm like okay, I, I have a like I, I don't know how to word and I remember yeah, texting yeah. you but you were asleep baby and you were like and, and you got back to me in the morning you're like really and I was just oh, and, and Chris didn't even give me his thing number. about Metal Gear 2 was that like a lot of the villains you learn later on that like another spoiler uh, a lot of them were trying to free people of a system that was like literally grasping at them and could be so easily controlled and manipulated like the whole world was being manipulated by this system that was set up and these terrorists were actually freeing people from this system i mean obviously they were killing people and like you know trying to trying to use nuclear deterrence to get the world to play play nice with their ideals but they were they were bad guys but kind of not well, shit, in Star Wars, the good guys are ultimately bad guys, right? Technically, if you're, ta if you're talking about... The about rebels? That. Well, rebels yeah. aren't necessarily bad. I mean, when you look at, like, cool. political structures in certain countries, rebellions are, in at times, yeah, chaotic and yeah. Uh, enforcing some of the neg like, negative things, but it also could be positive. Um, well, like, if, if they're speaking up for what is going to help the people. Of course, but revolutionaries are always seen as negative and portrayed until, as until until they win by the powers that be. For sure, and then they like it, you're you're a rebel until you're a freedom fighter. Exactly, you're the rebel yeah. until you win, yeah, until you're, you're the victor. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like until until you win, and then you're the freedom fighter. Right. Right. Victors are the ones that write the history. They exactly, exactly. But uh, Akisora asked if everybody in 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 here. As as upset with Iron Fist, Iron Fist. As the world's I didn't watch Iron Fist. Same. I didn't. I I'll be right back. I like. Yeah, I liked Daredevil. I did not like Jessica Jones for a lot of reasons. I couldn't stand it. And then I tried to like Luke Cage. Uh, I thought like some of I I I watched like I think half of it, 
And then I just didn't bother with Iron Fist. So that's where I'm at. Iron Fist is not as bad as everybody says. And, and the thing is, while I think the problem is the cheesiness and the way that he fights is who the character is, though. That that's part of how the character is. So, and initially, Iron Fist was created. Like there, there are a lot of people who complain. So, how's a little blonde boy gonna be trying to tell you know the agents and all that how to how to do martial arts? Well, you gotta understand that when this comic book character was created, you know they and, and they can't just change the nature of the character. They're simply trying. They simply have to revitalize and make things slightly current but the character is going to be the character so you got to sometimes understand that and just take it for what it is and enjoy what you can enjoy out of it it was not bad i'm ready for defenders i'm ready to see yeah i would like to see defenders like that's the thing i've skipped all the other stuff but i would like to see how it all comes together but i'm really only watching it because i liked daredevil so much and I'm, i'm confident this is going to come round into um into uh you know, the Punisher and into into Daredevil. The acting is so bad in Jessica Jones. She is horrible. I can't like I'm, I'm answering mean? the question. She I can't stand it. It's cringeworthy. Like, especially when you put her up against other actors. And I felt that about this actress the entire I can't remember her name, but everything I've seen her in, I've seen her as like it's it's weak performance. And I think it was kind of overhyped. So that kind of let it down. Because I watched it late. Um and I was all excited. I was all excited for so many, all the reasons that people were saying, and I was just kind of like, I think that was my face the entire time I watched it. Oh my god, it's not bad. I, I, I didn't care for it, and you know what? It's nothing against people who liked it. If you liked it, good for you. But I mean, there are going to be people who don't like things you like, and there's nothing. It doesn't take away from why you like it. You're not going to like everything that I like, right? You not like no, because people get really defensive, and it's like, well, you're wrong, and it's like, well, I didn't like it, so. You're not going to tell me I like, you know, a Mars bar when I prefer Snickers or something like that. Exactly. You know, it doesn't mean Mars bars are, are crummy. It just means I personally didn't like it. And um, I found the narrative stronger in Daredevil. I like the fight scenes better as well. Um, oh, the single shot fight scenes. Were, oh. Right. And I think that what I like about shows like that uh, was I, I like, personally, I like fight choreography. And I did find that really, really lacking. And the other ones, just because they're different styles of fighters. Um, because the finesse, like, ninjas are cool. Like, they fight differently. Daredevil fights differently. Like, that's where it didn't draw me. I, I You know what, too? Uh, the, like, the actress for Jessica Jones looked extra poor beside David Tennant because he is so strong. So, you, yeah. like, it just it exemplified her weaknesses for me. Instead of actually masking them, like, with one Oh, one, yeah. One, you'd be like, okay, at least, you know, David Tennant can paper over the cracks. It's like, nah, look at this microscope right here on your acting. It's so horrible. And I have a hard time. Of- yeah, it pulls me out of it, basically. Uh, so it loses your interest, like, as soon as it, she starts so, talking or acting, you're like, oh. Yeah, so there wasn't really amazing fighting and the acting was poor. And that's where I kind of, and you know what, I'm getting real sick. Like, I know people are like, oh, like, you know, s- strong female figure who does this and that. To me, that should just be normal. Like, yeah, Well, that should be the norm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so like, when people are hyping it, it too much, I'm kind of just like, This is this should this should be like, a this should be an exception of how it should be good because it's a good character and it's a good narrative, not just because she's it's a strong a girl. Yeah. Girl. And that's what I normal. feel. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no no, it should be the normal. It should be the yeah. norm. But I mean, as as you know, like I mean, you as a woman actually gave your input on it and you touch base on it and then you <laughs> It ain't that funny. I'm sorry, sorry, I got distracted. I'm sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, no. Um, details as to why it should be. You know, yeah, more- and like it's fine if people like it. If that's your cup of tea for a show, like not everyone likes a crime drama. Some people right. like, you know what I mean, or like just in general, like it wasn't my cup of tea for those reasons. I feel um, that's totally okay. We're not gonna like what each other. Yeah. You know, we all like. I mean, we're gonna have to, you know different things like. Will and I have a good track record of agreeing on you know things because we have similar taste. But like mm. the DMC thing is like the is like the the stick it's in the point of contention. Yeah, it's just like we're both like mm. we're not budging. <laughs> yeah, 
it's fine though. I mean, it creates you know like fun conversation pieces. We I both agree. know that no matter what we do, it's like so you know fun. We just have different tastes in, in games. Like I, yeah, I, I, you guys must rag on your friends for like a game that's so bad, but you they like it, so you just kind of just like mess with them. You're just like, oh my god, oh, I, don't, like, sure. I don't even think we have just like tongue in games. I just think it's a, a this. I think it's a very specific <laughs> example, and I think. I think in the case of DMC, it was, <laughs> it was just a matter of. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong. I think DMC was a good game. I think mechanically, I think it was good. I think visually, it was very interesting. I think it had a lot of things that were going for it. I think the mechanics were better in that than many of the other DMC games. So I think it was successful in doing that. It's just, you know. You know feel oh, it, no. feel it. But yeah, no, no, you're right. And then, um, yeah, I, I can't comment on uh, on Iron Fist because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see. I just heard nothing but like terrible things about it. So I was like, I'm not. I mean, it's that. not terrible, but y'all y'all already know. Like, I'm usually the last one to like completely say something that's just outright trash. Like, I try to mm-hmm. give everything the benefit of the doubt until I can't. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, um, just every now and then I can't. And I make it known. Oh, yeah, by the way. <laughs> Street Fighter 5 is a bitch. What'd you say? Huh? Street Fighter 5, he said it's a yeah, bitch. ask you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> my, um, also, we have another uh, cosplayer as well with us that's going, that we're making the whole, like, he 3D printed all this, like... Oh, cool. I haven't played is with the 3D printer yet. Is that the Master Sword? Yet. What is that? Yeah, it's the Master Sword. You know, three Master Swords, the Ancient Arrow... Like it's it, like his. We're going ham and a half on this project, and we only have like four days before the con, and we just started Ooh. yesterday. Wait, mm. so is Katsukan the same? Oh, sorry, uh, Otakon. Otakon. That's the same Otakon. time as Boston Comic Con. Yeah, so you're not gonna see me, baby. I'm sorry. Well, it's okay because I'm not gonna see you either for Dragon Con. Sorry, sorry you're just guys. ruining <laughs> all hopes and dreams. Yeah, so, so I'm sorry. not even gonna go. Next year I'm going to Dragon Con unless you know Square was like, all right. And I'll be like, all right, okay. gotta bring my head. shut up. I didn't, I didn't get my fitness goal anyway. Once you told me you weren't going, I was like, shit, I'm gonna get back right back to this pizza. <laughs> <laughs> he was so, I feel bad because shit, now I don't have to feel bad about the pizza. <laughs> I'm gonna start cardio workout. I'm gonna start doing all this, this, and that. And I'm just like, all right, perfect. And then we got an offer, and we're like, oh fuck, we can't do this. And then I told Jamil, and he's just like. Boy, get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, uh, what, go ahead, then, bro. Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, oh my god, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to plug Jimmy because he made our Master Swords, and he's just an amazing three, like, eight That's cosplayer. Yeah. And he's like, he's like an up and coming, like, cosplayer. Yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing. Like, he really does need to, like, be, like, thrown out there. Like, I give it, I give him, like, a year. Before people are like, oh, is that Jimmy? Oh my god! And they they're like, they yeah, sign my boobs. Is that Jimmy? It's all about the right. It's all about the right platform. Like it's yeah. just exposure, right? A lot of the time, oh, people man. are really, really talented, putting out awesome work. It's just about people seeing it. Exactly. I'm just gonna. Do it. But yeah, guys, feel free to check out you know Danny and um, Jimmy as well. They're just, they're just amazing cosplayers. They always update the constant you know tips, you know constant content and everything. Really good because Danny over here, the pineapple. <laughs> he posts a lot of tips on cosplay just starting up. Just not posting his tip online. Yeah, and it's like a lot of people, you know, like honest, like ha- like pay for stuff like that. But he's just like whatever. Fuck. He's in his words, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 so that's why I. He's very humble. They're both but amazing. I, let me go follow Jimmy now. Actually. Jimmy I'm about to do the same thing because I'm like Instagram following. Everyone else stuff. who is uh, watching the stream right now or uh, listening on iTunes or, or uh, watching on YouTube, go follow these amazing, beautiful faces. Uh, follow them now. <laughs> we have myself, Black Oni, uh, Black Oni on Twitter. We have uh, Yo It's Yodu on Twitch and Chris underscore Lascano on Twitter. We have Three Manifested on both Twitter and Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> and we have Ashley Do on Twitch and Undead Do oh. on Twitter. Yeah. 
and Instagram. And uh-huh. Instagram. So go follow Check on Instagram as well. <laughs> the gram. I'm pretty it's sure, uh, Chris, it's uh, just, it's Yoru, right? It's Yoru for uh, Instagram. And then uh, my Twitch is Yo, it's Yoru for some asshole took my fucking <laughs> I know It's probably video. me. I'm probably dumb. And I got that name like a while ago. And <laughs> probably. A link to another email. Them. How dare you? I know, right. I'm going to send them an email. You know, how dare you take my name? I'm going to check my other, you know, I'm like, oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> no one will <wants> know. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just put Danny to the new year in terms of the follower number. That's kind of cool. Nice. Yeah. Now he's in the, now he's living in the future. You're in the future, bro. Future. Future. Oh. <laughs> Are you guys streaming today? Oh yeah. See. Awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah. I am too. Later. What you gonna do? Mm, think I'm crafting, working on some stuff. Ugh. I can dig What's it. The, Are you getting ready for another con? What's your next one? Uh, I don't have a con until the end of the month, so I'm really just finishing odds and ends so I can get some shoots done this month. And yeah, so pretty low key, which will be nice. Are you shooting with Eric? With Eric? I love Eric. You know he's like my bestie. We're going to my cottage next week. No, oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. He did the next yeah. shoot that um that blew up on Twitter. I was like, I yo, this is amazing. I know, I love Eric. He's no, amazing. He, he's, like, I, he's wonderful. He really is. He's super supportive and I find that he takes incredibly dynamic photos. He understands cosplay photography. Because there is a striking difference between different types of photography. You know, and it's not just oh, I'm shooting a model. He really does recreate sequential arts or like illustrative work. So I find that it, it can bring such a a I different level to your show. cosplay art. Yeah. So I, I love it. He's great. Oh, it's a bit, right. When you see him say tell him to hi, all right? I will. I will. No, I, I saw that you guys shot together. I was like, oh my god, small world. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. But then again, it's the cosplay world, right? But uh, yeah, we're going up to my cottage next week. Uh, we both talk about how we're workaholics and it's our way of having a vacation that's still working. So we're gonna do some shoots. Uh, my friend Leslie is supposed to come too. She does toys and like uh, custom toys, pop toys, and she's uh, she's doing some fo- like photography and cosplay. So we're all gonna go up, take some pictures, uh, but also enjoy the cottage. So we're tricking ourselves into having a vacation, but getting work done too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh well, one awesome. thing that I do want to um, please tell them that I love them and everything. But um, one thing that I did want to bring up, uh, well, maybe we should address this, is our awareness run with uh, Dustin or a bunch of stuff that we wanted to talk to him about, like, like CyberSmile and stuff like that. Yeah. Who at? What's that, sorry? So, Your volume. Oh, is- oh yeah. We, we, uh, we briefly had a conversation about um, doing a campaign for uh, mental health awareness and cyberbullying. Yay! Um, we wanted to do this, this like months ago, but we just ha- didn't have time to get around to doing it. So we're going to try to plan an actual like day to do it and just do like a charity run for that, uh-huh. um, so that we can we can help. Uh, you know, you know what this stream is always about. It's always about like helping to spread positivity, positivity yeah. but it's also um, we also have opportunities to to reach a lot of people and get messages out about stuff like this. And so uh-huh. um, I think we've all have come under some type of cyber bullying before. Um, and I think it'll be an opportunity that we can come together and, and talk about those experiences. Or actually, maybe we don't even talk about those experiences. Maybe we just say, hey, we're going to keep being as awesome as we can be. We're going yeah. to help other people be awesome. We're going to have fun. And we're going to help spread awareness about uh, it being an issue, but also about yeah. us overcoming cyber bullying and how exactly. we can do that too. So, um we're definitely going to be doing something like that with Aki Sora as well, uh, yep. so that we can we can get the word out, get people involved, get people out of their shells, feel comfortable. That's the, you know we want people a positive to space, about, right? yeah. a positive space to talk about you know like how you faced a, a certain cyberbullying or bullying in general in in your life and you've overcome it, you've grown stronger from it, and and you've become a better person because you said this is not going to take me down and I'm going to keep moving forward. So that's yeah, I. I'm glad that I have like friends like Will and Sora and you guys as well because you're very supportive of this and everyone. It's really really lovely, you know. It's like there's no end to how supportive everyone is. That's that's amazing. Yeah, you can't buy that. You really can't buy that. Very cool. That's exciting. I need <laughs> tips. 
I am Excellent. doing my first charity stream next week, actually. Uh, every year on August 11th, I s- celebrate Robin Williams' life. And he was a big part of my childhood and uh, continues to be a big part of my life. It was only a few months ago that I could listen to any music with him in it. And I still haven't watched a movie with him in it since he passed away. I get really, really emotional. Um, So this year I decided to, I'm going to be doing one for uh, mental health awareness and suicide prevention. So I, yeah, I'm figuring out how to do it. Like how, how, I'm like, what should I be doing on the stream? So I've been kind of looking up like... Ways to yeah, ways to really make cool. it fun for everybody and like, but I've never I've I've seen some, but I've never hosted one, so I'm, I'm very be great. Curious. It I'm excited. Oh, drop, you dropping by obviously to just you know support you as well and donate if you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, when, that just that's why I'm wondering when is yours because um, August I have a lot more time. I was going to say if we had a do, chance to do it together, that'd be amazing. Actually, the week after, I would the week love after to. Oliticon, yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, when, oh, that's this weekend, August 11th is this weekend. This yeah, week. yeah, I'm going to be at Boston Comic Con, so I'm, I'm going to be at Comic Con, yeah. But call. I mean, the week after, the week after we can, I wanted to do something for uh, mental um, mental health illnesses as well. Um, I mean, know, especially mental- with Chester, I'm sure it's on, like, yeah. I, was, yeah. I literally brought that up. Yeah. 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 It and it's about- incredible, so you just never know. And, the and thing that's is, what it exemplifies for me. A and lot of streamers stream. come down with a lot of mental health issues as well just in general i i've noticed it um some of the biggest streamers out there are depressed as fuck because a a lot of them like i told you guys before about the advice about like how to grow if you want to see those numbers as large as possible sticking to that one game that can drive you crazy after time and then if you don't if you're not seeing the growth you're looking for if people are just constantly coming in just talking shit or you don't have that many people that you interact with generally um, some people get really lonely. Uh, it's true. And, it's not and just, just, it, it does a number on your, on your psyche as well. And you, you oh, hustle sure. so much and you don't sleep and you're, you're constantly <laughs> at it. I, I mean, hey, listen. Well, and I'm, you're also working on something involved with passions. Yeah. I think anytime you have an emotional com- component to it, it's going to key into that possibility of any emotion, though. Like, the highs are really high, but the lows are incredibly low. So you're experiencing supreme joy, but also experiencing um, this depth of of emotion and, and of love, but also of, um, of depression. So, and that's what I think people, like, it's so easy to judge when it's not something that you deal with personally, but to say to someone when they're in their states, like, 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 because it is a state. Like, I, I have someone very close to me who uh, deals with depression quite severely. And um, it really is, like, it, it's um, debilitating. And it's no longer choices that you can make. Like, it, it, it's clouded you. Yeah. And you're almost not you. You're this, like, uh, apparition of yourself. That's so, the best way to, yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, it's almost like an out, outer body experience. So I um, really, like... You know, seeing things like uh, here in Canada, we have uh, Bell as a telephone company. We'll do mental health day. Uh, like, let's talk. Like, let's think. Oh, yeah, sorry, bless you. Uh, let's let's bring more narratives. Let's bring more voices to become aware that this isn't anybody thing. And there's no type. There's no nothing you can see. And that's the difficult thing about mental illnesses. Exactly. It's not like a broken arm where it's like, hey, man, you're healing. You know, do you need me to help you lift that because you are hurt? But when it's in your mind and no one can see it, no one can go like, hey, man, can I help you lift that? That emotional burden or that or that, yeah. that depression that you have. And then uh, it's it's great that you have, well, it's not great, but I mean, it's, you know, we can find comfort in the fact that, you know, we all probably have someone that's dealing with, you know, severe depression that's really close to right. us. And a lot, and oftentimes there's, there's, there's signs, but then sometimes there are no signs and it's just... It's it's so hard to help out when you're when you're trying your absolute best, but you and what works with one person is not help for another. Exactly, that's the hard part. So I also want to mention that for anyone who has someone in their life who is dealing with mental illness, those lines are okay for you to call to Mm -hmm. if you need support as a partner, as a friend, as a sibling, as a child of somebody, or a classmate, or you know, if you find yourself having a diff or coworker, if you want advice, because maybe it's emotional on you as well, mm-hmm. you can call those lines asking for support. It's not just for the person who is dealing with, uh, with crisis. And that's, that's beautiful. No, no, it's beautiful because a lot of the times the pillars of support, the pillars of strength 
they don't know how to deal with that. They don't know how to deal with it because they're this is all new to them. While the person that is suffering from the mental illness, uh, the mental health illness is is used to it. They they understand. They know how to deal with it, even in certain ways. But then, like a happy person that's trying to help out so hard, and they don't get anywhere, or, they, or it's harder for them to you know help out. It, it's a bigger blow to them. And yeah, they're running out of gas too. Exactly, that's all it is. And, and they, they don't know where the gas station is. So yeah. It's a nice little reminder. It's a nice little GPS to be like, hey, you're doing great. And the exactly. Exactly. So Next wonderful. left. Uh-huh. And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm full again. And now I can help out to become this positive uh, force for good. You know what I mean? I mean, because ultimately that is the best thing. And I love it. It's been. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm definitely. So you guys. So are hoping to have in mid-August, you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Because I, I, if you if you find out a date, like, I would like to know sooner than possible so I can try to schedule around it. Because I, I mean, like I said, August I'm pretty freed up. I'm really just doing fan expo and a bunch of shoots and stuff. Mm. So um, we can I, we can try to figure out uh, what what games we can play or what uh, things we can do. We can either n- go ahead. I wanted. To, I'm sorry. I'm to interject, but a good way a good way to start this is since it's a hot button issue right now and it's a hot game as as now because there's a lot of fire behind it is um the final fantasy 15 dlc of prompto because it deals with a lot of mental health issues as well it's um, okay it's, so it links in it's, it's short yeah it's short but it's if you know the story and it and you play it and it goes through a lot of a lot of things that people that are depressed or they have mental illnesses will go through and it's wonderful to see you know you can, you can fight back and even as strong as you are you mm-hmm. still are you still need help or you still need you know, support when dealing with emotions, when dealing with emotional stuff, because we don't have a gun that's armed. We don't have a something that makes sense. So, I, I think that I would love to start off with that. I would love to start off with that. But I mean, if you guys want to play anything else, that's that's perfect. Um, I got a code for Guns of Icarus as well from one of the. the I so much shit has happened. Well, I forgot to tell you, but from um, from one of the community leaders. Okay. And he was just, yeah, play this. Yeah, it's great. And I was explaining to him that I wanted to do a cherry stream, yeah. like a twenty-four hour one. And they were like, "Oh my god, this is great! We'll help you." Oh, I'm hot and stuff. Like, oh, okay, that's great. This is great. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. No, I love that reaction. Yeah, you gotta tell me all about it, dude. Like, I, I, I don't know <laughs> what's happening. I know, I know. I'm just uh, my, I, I'm like working like sixty hours a week. I'm trying to get cosplays done and stuff like that. But I mean, we'll definitely have to catch up with long yeah. things. I have so much to talk about too. And then good things too. Good things too. I'm just trying to make sure the positives outweigh the negative. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I love that you guys are very on board for this. This is this makes me feel better because it's like I would have done it with Will and just um, uh, Akisara, but you're more than welcome to come because you have a wealth of knowledge to you and it is completely pivotal. So yay! Yeah, like I said, like, I'm I'm really looking forward to hosting my own and participating in more. So for sure, if like I said, as soon as I know the date, I can try to plan around it. Perfect. Yeah, no, that sounds fun. And then uh, Dream Manifest, they could you know, definitely play with us too. Yeah, you know, I'm down with it. I'm hey, always down for the cause. He's here for it. No, this listening to y'all, happen. listening to y'all, <laughs> and makes me like I know exactly what kind of charity stream or what charity that I need to be doing. Well, we have Extra Life coming up. We do. I want to make a big event for this one. Yeah. We, we got to get Instagram behind it, so I'm definitely down for that. And, you know, as small as like the following is, I think that they would be happy to help, which is great because it's yeah. like, yes! <laughs> you know, every little bit helps, you know? Every and little bit like, helps, that's right. Mm-hmm. So, okay. who else is going to be streaming today? Uh, I might get on the taking ground. I don't know. I might take it easy today. It's already five o'clock. I got things to do. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But if not, <laughs> if not, I might get. On. Actually, you know what? I saw my partners on Xbox. They were playing Titanfall too. So I have if, Titanfall too. And it's actually a good game, but nobody was good. I don't know. I guess finally it's thirty nine ninety nine. So I guess they're like, shoot. I guess we'll go ahead and get it. Yeah. Um, so me and my partner, you know, me and my brother, like we have each other's Xbox instead of home. Oh, blase blase. So when each other buys something digital, we both get it. Whatever. So he got it. It means I got it. So I'm, we might we might stream some of that. They'll probably be done playing by the time I get online. Though it's all good. Okay. But yeah, man. I mean, um, fortunately, I won't be streaming. I gotta. Yeah, you got 3D printing to do. 
Oh. 3D. <laughs> and yeah, that's the thing that sucks about Sunday streaming right now. A lot of people do watch Game of Thrones, and um, that's why I want to stream before it starts. So I'm going to be nine. streaming during Game of Thrones. Uh, I'm going to be streaming. Um, I have some stuff I'm going to finish artwork related. Uh, cool. So I have to go on the other machine and, and do that. Then I'm probably going to jump back to playing something. Probably PUBG tonight. Um, we haven't played that in a little while. So I think either that or Black Desert Online. Not entirely sure. But I'm feeling I'm feeling like I need to play something today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was there anything else that anybody wanted to talk about today? Were there any questions that we may have missed in the chat? What's the first thing you're going to do when you're super mega famous, Will? Ah! <laughs> that's an if. Ah! Uh, when? That's an... Yeah. That's a, you hey, can find it. the answer within any 2 chain song. Don't <sighs> <laughs> 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 your tent. <laughs> In terms of what I'll do if I ever become famous, um... There's a long list of shit I need to do. Number I wanna, one, top priority for you. Top priority? Getting the Number fucking one. game. Like, making the game. Like, that's top priority. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's other things I want to do. I want to, like, own property. I want to... I want to build my own house. Oh. Um, I want to cosplay my own characters. I want to... Uh, I live in the house. Huh? Hmm? What'd you say? It's like I live in the house. You gonna make a room for me? He's gonna make a room for me. The fuck out of here! Who are you talking about? He's gonna be behind <laughs> the book. If I can make the if I can make the house big enough, I'll make a room for a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if I would, I would use that fame as a. I mean, like I already make myself available as a resource for people, but I would definitely let more people know that like I can help them see their way through whatever it is they're tr like at least artistically or at least in terms of streaming like i can help them figure shit out so if that was the case if i had the ability to just like kick back and like not have to rely on like a full-time job in order to do whatever that i wanted to do that would be it i would travel i would um i'd probably be making even more art probably just a bet right yeah, you're gonna be making art. what about you chris I mean, you're already like, oh, how, like hold on, let's, let's let's take a moment to how many followers you got on Instagram now? Dude, not even anything near any like any good numbers like what what I want. I mean, like it's fine because I I don't post a lot of content up and stuff. But I mean, following that I do have is pretty cool. Right? They're all tightly knit. They love mix, and I just I, I really am appreciative of that. But the top first thing that I would do if I ever you know get you know a lot of like, you know, just, you know, get compensated for something big. It'll be, uh, making sure my parents don't ever have to work a day in their life. Mm -hmm. A day in their life. Ever. Definitely. That's the first and foremost thing for me. Legit. After that, after that, just help all other people out. You know, just, that, that song, um, What the fuck is your goddamn Instagram name anyway? Wait, what? I said, what the hell is his... Instagram name any day. No, it's not. I just type in and it's not. Yo, it's Yodu. It's just, it's Yodu. I just put a link there. Ah. Oh, not with a Z. Okay. What the fuck? Hey, everybody spells it's with a Z nowadays, okay? The S is becoming. 2000. Look here. How about you, Ashley, when you when you make it, you know, super mega, duper famous? If that's I mean, that's a it, difficult question. I mean, don't play. You know you already think. <laughs> shall uh, we go to? The, shall we consult the numbers? Do we gotta, do we gotta play this number game? Do we gotta do this right now? Do we I guys? Do, do. I think for me, um, if it enables me to continue doing what I'm doing, because like I, I'm happy now. Obviously, I would like more money to do what I'm doing to invest in it, because uh, it's a lot. Like cosplay is not cheap. So, oh. and it's this fine balance between like working um, and being able to invest in my own business and time and everything like that. So I think I would just, I would love to have like dream shop set up like workspace, you yes. know, oh. um, the materials that I want to achieve. Cause like, there's so many ambitions that I have 
related to cosplay that are very difficult if you don't have the financial backing because like you know equipment is not cheap and when you want to do a lot of things it's like how do you allocate the money yep. you know yep. if you want to be cosplaying you have to buy materials but if you want to be doing youtube stuff if you want to be streaming you have to be buying the things to go with it yep and that stuff is not cheap it's not like i'm doing just one thing nope. you know you're, what you're i mean well it's, it's it's um multifaceted so i think i would you know want the freedom to be doing that of course there are people who have been very supportive along the way and i would like to help invest in their businesses it's just a matter of uh i know they're doing what they want to do and sometimes they just also would need that backing so if i if i had that i would like to invest in certain companies um that have really helped me get to where i'm getting who you know supported me uh in the early stages of my career and continue to do so now um i mean i miss traveling i used to travel um i used to work in development so i would love to go back to certain places like i'd love to go back to west africa and southeast asia it's been a number of years since i've been there and it's weird when it's someplace that you used to work and live and uh you haven't been in a while so i it's hard to travel because i've been traveling in uh, north america predominantly with conventions so yeah, traveling would, would be back on the list, but I would like to travel with cosplay. As in, uh, I believe uh, environment is like a prop. So when it comes to cosplay photography, it'd be awesome to be able to do more on location shoots. Um, yeah, and investing in certain artists that I think need, uh, like deserve it. And I want to see, see them continue to create content. So yeah, just that. I think, you know, yeah. investing in events yeah. and everything. That, that's away. that's really where I'd I'd want. <laughs> What's not, that? not laughing Chat? at you. Not laughing what at happened? you. I think that's awesome. Who are we um, kidnapping? Are we kidnapping Carmen the Festive? Kidnapping. He's trying to be my dad. Yeah, daddy. we're doing it. Uh <laughs> Dream Daddy over there. All right. So his dream after he becomes super famous is to become a dream daddy. Cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway. uh, All right, Dream. Come on, you know. I mean, it's in his name. Name. It's in his name. <laughs> Yes! Uh, dream, dream daddy. You just got fucked up. Uh, dream daddy. That's so funny. Well, to be honest, I don't want to be famous at all. I just want to be, I mean, I understand that it, to a degree it comes with the territory, especially when you work in this area. The money and stuff comes with your, your notoriety. Um, but ultimately... My biggest goal, like I said, for me, my purpose to create games and stories is to tell a story. And the stories, in turn, are supposed to or intended to give children and people another way to think about life and let them know that they can do things and have aspirations. And that's my way of affecting the populace in terms of spreading positive. Everything for me is just about spreading positivity. Mm -hmm. So that's ultimately what I want to do. That's that's my ultimate goal, and that's 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 outside of that's whether I whether I get the money or not. That's what that's what I'm working towards. You feel me? Now, if I want to be if I want to dial it back to be a little more selfish, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like what I would do a, a selfish thing that I would do with money, or it, I don't know, I don't know, I don't because. I don't want like 50 million cars. I don't want 50 million houses. Really, I would just want a pretty, uh, I want, I would want a house probably bigger than my parents, but I want a big enough house where like my parents have a nice house. So they always want people like for holidays for family to be able to come in. Mm -hmm. So I want a big enough house for the families to be able to come in. You know, like I, I can host that. I'd want to be, I want to have. Well, space for your workspace. Like, and, yeah, exactly. I want yeah. my That's own the problem. studio. When we need, yeah, I need a studio for streaming, one for crafting, uh, like space to exactly. do like my own self photography. Yep. Just need space. This is my space. Need, I need, need, if I got money, I buy some space. Damn it. Exactly. <laughs> no, seriously, it's a real right thing. Now. Like, I need at least hey, three space. bedrooms just yes. to function. Right. Like right. plus living room. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if I want to be the best of my best, like I can make do. Like Harry, uh, Harry Potter Nick made, dude. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Harry dude. Potter made do under the stairs, but like it's much nicer when you're at Hogwarts. <laughs> For real, yeah. you ain't lying. When the staircases are you know moving and you don't have to walk as far, it's better than you know having to walk up you know ten thousand flights of stairs. Also yeah. known as an escalator. <laughs> So, no, I feel it. Like space is a thing. Like, and you want a life. Like, which is that having family, having moments, and I think. I want to stop. Yeah. I think that's that's awesome. 
hold in well. But yeah, see? We're all gonna make it somewhere or another, you know? Yeah. One I don't there. Do what I can to help you. Do you guys. think you would stay in that Atlanta area or do you think you'd want to move somewhere else? Like for all same with you, Will, would you stay in Boston? Would you move somewhere that's like like and would you move? I'm wondering, is it like a career move as in like this will elevate my production or is this one of those things where it's like because of family and friends? It would have to be a career move. I fucking think I hate it. I hate it with a fucking passion. Oh, food. yeah. Because you have stuff. I, I got see. stuff too. I'm a collector. I have stuff and some of the stuff is like irreplaceable. Like yeah. statues, okay. for example, you can't just like buy another one. Like they only make a certain number of them, and that's it. When it comes yep. to like fucking this, well, I mean, I would definitely get a new computer in my ass. But like, there's just certain things that I I hate unpacking, packing. Like I've had to move like a bunch of times in between a short period of time. So I'm just like I'm I'm. It's unattractive. But when it comes to like uh, opportunities for career paths, I wouldn't mind moving. Um, I'm I still need to do it. I had a couple people suggest that I, I apply for Blizzard and I'm going to do it, but I wanted to do it when my portfolio was, um, when it has more of my newer stuff on my portfolio and it's taking okay. a while to collect everything and get it on there and get it all worded. So I'm going, I have to redo my whole website, but for now I'm going to be using a different service for putting my stuff on the portfolio. Uh, it's like the Adobe portfolio site that you can be Um, you could also use ArtStation. You can use Wix to make your own website as well. There's a whole bunch of things you can do, but I would have to have a really amazing opportunity come up that I can't get anywhere else, you know? So, and yeah, come to I, Brazil. Huh? Come to Brazil, like Mitzi always says. Come to Brazil. Uh, I would yeah, that's what she always says. I would, I would love to live in Brazil. Yeah. Well, so my thing is, and, and at that point, it would probably be at a point where I'm no longer working. Not even doing anything like yeah. ultimately, I would want to live probably somewhere outside of the U.S. I just want to live somewhere with a slower pace of life, yeah, more Especially, relaxed, more, more relaxed, more that I can just enjoy. Go to life Oz. Tend it. Australia, to Oz. yeah, yeah. Um, I found like the great thing, like even when I was in the big Boston, ass bugs out there, I was about to say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> not that's not relaxing when you got to worry about. <laughs> well, it depends on where you are, it's just like. It's big enough, but like like when I was living in Sydney and Melbourne, like it definitely does. It feels fast, but it's a slower pace. It's like slower. It's kind of best of best of both worlds that way. I found. But yeah, where would you move then if you're outside? We, what what exotic locale are we deciding upon? <laughs> well, I'm glad go. you asked. Um, like I said, I, I've thought about places in Brazil, um, maybe like some like New Zealand. New Zealand is wonderful. Uh, My yeah. mom grew up there. Oh, yeah? yeah? I've been to New Zealand a number of times, yeah. Somewhere like that. Somewhere, okay. I don't know, like, where is it? Um, in Transporter, what was it? I guess the first one, he was in France, right? Yeah. The first, yeah, so, like, he had that little, the little house that he had that was, like, kind of secluded. You had to drive uh, along the winding hills to get, like, I want to be secluded from people. Italy. When, when I'm at home, you know what I'm saying? When I'm at home, I want to be able to be at home and not have to worry about it, but I want to still be close enough to civilization where I got good internet and shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any kind of money, then like you can make it so you have good internet. This is internet. This is also awesome. internet. Is oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Hello. Oh, right. He said, oh, there it is. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> but her accent. No, uh, and Shay comes out, mate. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah, I, I feel like uh, I, I definitely want to travel to a couple more places. Like, I feel like a lot of my uh, vacation days lately have been spent on cons or, or like yeah. recouping myself um, doing like I feel like, or what, what, what were the last, I think the last couple of things were for cons. Like, I feel like I've used a lot of vacation days on stuff that wasn't vacation. So, yeah, like, I, I feel like my thing is, like, I can be most places as long as, you know, again, good internet, good access to other resources and, like, society and shit. I can be in most places. It's just, like, I would rather travel there than live all those places. Like, 
mm-hmm. I have no problem. Like Japan, for example, like I've heavily considered Love moving Japan. out there. Yeah, but like I don't want to live there. At least not right now. Like I, I want to keep going. I back. think for a short period of time. Like I would live yeah. there for like a, a couple of years. Yeah, I feel that well, way yeah, about certainly. like New York too. Like I would like to live in New York for a couple of years. I lived but... there for a couple months, and I was just like, all right, I'm out. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Manhattan's pretty cool. Well, the problem is like that's why I don't agree with the couple months because you kind of get into a rhythm. But you haven't really. And it yeah. goes by really, really quickly. Oh, like yeah. the first, like when I was in Ghana, like before I knew it, I was leaving and I'd like just gotten into a rhythm before I had to leave. So it's difficult to say like a couple months. I think like I, that's why to me a year or two years is a good judgment of a place because you end up finding your favorite bookstore. You find your favorite coffee shop. You, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You tried this random activity at this one place such as like you know i did wall climbing with some friends at that place i ended up really liking it i think that that that's a big thing is like two months you just kind of settle in i think in my experience you settle in you kind of get the vibes you get this rush and you go like you leave and but you didn't create that strong connection with it yeah that's kind of like where it's hard because like but then how many (laughs) years go by and you're like oh (laughs) <laughs> oh, <buddy. laughs> oh boy, I'm done with these fools. I'm gonna just go eat and think about how yeah. to find new friends. Why? Why you? Why you? Roasting? Say, did, no one's yeah. roasting you. So, no one is yeah. roasting you, sir. What talk happened? About, talking about uh, keeping the windows open and being naked in front of them. And knowing that no one's gonna be spying on yellow, uh, I do that now. Fuck it. <laughs> I already, I already said so. I don't care if they spy. If they looking, they looking. If they looking, they looking. So hey, funny. it's a show for everybody. I'm trying That's to, funny. I'm trying to ask for the payment at that point. Like, really? <laughs> how you pay up? <laughs> I gladly. Oh my goodness. Oh. Is it? Is it lunchtime? Yeah, oh, like, dinner time. It's yeah, I gotta, I gotta eat. Then we're all gonna. I'm, I think I'm gonna take like a half hour break and then maybe forty five minutes and then stream it. Same. Stream before Game of Thrones. So if people want, they can always let me see uh, exclamation point streams. This link here. There's also other services as well. If you want to watch a couple of people at the same time, you can always just replace the names that are in that multi stream thing with the other people, and mm-hmm. you can watch a couple people at the same time. So. Me and Ashley will both be doing some creative stuff, and then I'm going to transition over to gaming. Um, I'm not sure what time, but yeah, I'm definitely taking a break. Uh, going to get some food, probably clean up a little mm. bit of this area, and then yeah, I want to do a uh, I want to do a setup video because like my cool. setup right now is kind of dope. You should. I love seeing other people's stuff. There's like a few uh, Instagram channel or not channel Instagram pages I follow that do like setup Saturday or yeah. setup Sunday or whatever, and I love seeing it because I think it's so neat. Yeah. It just makes me excited when I can do my own. Yeah, and I, I'm always, again, I'm always around for you guys to to be a resource for figuring out things that you want to do or ways you want to set up your stream or yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All the good stuff. Mm-hmm. All the good Don't stuff. be shy. Right. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much, guys, for having me, by the way. I know it's been a little while, but I always have a fantastic time on here. I always look forward to it. We're always part of the family. We always have been. I know, but it's like, you know, I had a crazy month. So I was like, oh. We're always ecstatic to have you on. I feel like your your energy is perfect for us. Perfect. Um, I want to give a huge shout to to Mr. Jamail Owens here. Yeah. Um, He mentioned a while ago that... uh, People might be interested in some backstory about myself because we always do interviews for other people, you know, try to learn more about our guests. Um, we have like, you know, people who've never been on before. We always interview them as well. And I, I guess we've never done it for me. So thank you for. Yeah, uh, thank you for hosting. Hey, today. Thank yeah. you for hosting. Look at that shit, dude. You are welcome. Hey, it, it, it's about that time. You got to pay homage. You got to pay homage. You get, like I said, you give us a platform. And we gotta use it. You're always giving us any kind of advice that you can, which is always helpful. So don't I talk about you. You know what I'm saying? This it's okay. Don't worry. You don't have to talk about yourself. You don't got to do it. We'll go ahead and fluff your feathers for you. And that's what it's about. <laughs> that's, no, that's that's really what it's about. It's about paying the you know, 
gotta yeah, you, you, you gotta let me fly. You gotta let me fly, Captain. You gotta let me fly. And in that same in that same regard, like he also put together the agenda as well. Yes, so, I saw. Uh, yes. Big shout out for that as well. And I again, I extend it out to anyone of our group who wants to uh, step up and do that. I think it worked really well. I think Dreamy did a great job. Hey, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Um, and we'll we'll be likely to do something like this again real soon. If you wanna if you wanna do it again, if you like it, then we can we can always switch off. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For and if sure. Chris decides he wants to or Ashley decides they wanna do a facilitation, wanna try Ooh. it out, see if you like it. Can you handle my hosting? <laughs> oh Lord, I don't know. <laughs> We're all like, we're all like, ready for our hosting. We're all in unison. <laughs> Shock value. Oh. Gonna go. It's like she's gonna be like that the entire time. <laughs> One, we all have to have mustaches on. Two, it can be construction paper or it can be real. But it's happening. Fuck y'all. Fuck y'all over there. <laughs> Actually, that's not how it's, that's not the alignment on the what you call it. Hold on, where y'all at? Y'all uh, above me. Fuck uh, them up there. Wait, you still you still did it wrong. Shut up. <laughs> it'll it'll do it. Whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna get fresh here at some point in life, okay? <laughs> yes. But um keep it locked here. We'll we'll have some more stuff going on. Thanks everyone for being here and for hanging out. Um, we're going to go into our outro screen, and while we're doing that, we'll uh, do a little host for somebody, give them a little bit of love, and then we're going to all get some food and get ready for the rest of tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being wonderful, amazing people in the chat, and we'll catch you <clears throat> next Black Oni Podcast. Adios. Bye.